So where I left off. So the last one I talked about was the March of Tyranny, down 3-4. Recap on that is the counter hit string, and then the second hit has, uh, it comes with counter hit. Uh, second hit has counter hit properties. Nothing guaranteed. Oh, he has so much range too. Uh, nothing guaranteed on a second hit, but you do get plus 23 frame advantage. They can guard. But that's plus 23 with you being spaced out, so you can kind of mix it up however you want. While running to whatever the fuck you want, you can do it, right? So, good move in general. Also, down three hits ground. It has a shitload of range. Tracks really well. It's good for Oki. This down three is really good in general. It's negative on hit, but who gives a shit, right? It's like negative four, and you push back a bit. It has a lot of range. You could, like, hit him with the tip and just kind of chill back here, you know? I would not recommend hitting people with this and going crazy with buttons, though. Don't do that. So now that we got that out of the way, the next move on the list is... I'm going through the actual names of the moves because Dragon Dolph's move names are so sick. Look at that. March of Tyranny. Separator. Down 4-1-3. Now, we talked earlier... I'm sorry. We talked last time about the fact that this combo's on counter here, right? March of Tyranny. But you'll notice the regular hit, and hit, the regular hit reaction animation looks like that, and the counter hit reaction animation looks like that. They fall down. Right, and I was suspecting that, hey, maybe that makes it like counter hit confirmable, so caliber style. I don't know if that's the case for March of Tyranny, but I do know that that is the case for Separator, down 4 1 3. So, normal hit, same thing. Pretty much the same animation, right? Counter hit, the counter hit animation is different from March of Tyranny, though. So, you'll see he like kicks his leg up and he leans to the side. And because this is a three-hit string instead of a two-hit string, you can commit to the down 4-1 and react to the unique counter-hit animation and finish the string. You could totally do that. It's not easy, and I'm not good at it, but you can practice that, once again, by going right here, player, attacks, counter-hit, setting it to random. Make sure setting, and make sure the second, uh, the first one is stand, and the second action is guard all. Alright, the three, you gotta press it kind of fast. I finally got it. It's very, very tight, the timing, but you can do it. Basically, I was doing, just like the way I talked about practicing throw breaking, I was just pressing the three, waiting to visually see it, and I'm pressing the three. So several of those times where it didn't come out, I I appropriately reacted to the counter hand animation. I was just pressing the three too slow. So I was slowly and slowly working it to get it faster and faster, and then, boom, I found the sweet spot. So, you know, you could totally... Um, Find a sweet spot and get the hang of this. See? Boom. Look at that. <sighs> Either way it goes, it's not like the most important thing in the world to, to get used to that. But the reason why that's good to know is I mentioned this last time in situations like for example 4-1 on hit on plus 8 right in Dragon Ball's face your standard hop kick will not be able to crush this down 4 because it's 15 frames hop kicks need 9 frames most low crushes need 9 7, 8, 9, 9 frames pretty much to crush so for example I'll try all of Dragon Ball's low crushes nope up forward two, nope. Up forward one, nope. Up forward three, nope. Just trying to hold up forward, nope. But in that case, it's not a counter hit, so it won't combo. Negative four is plus four all out. Everyone knows that. <laughs> Maybe uh, with you, balls much connected to America. Uh, his counter hit game seems to, be, seems to be all about strings rather than launchers. Uh, yeah, you're right. He doesn't have like a counter hit and knockout move. Like, that's a normal hit. But usually, you'll some characters will have a knockout counter hit move like that has that sort of animation on the first hit. 
But his is like four counter hit four three, counter hit down four one three, counter hit down three four, right? Counter hit one two one, counter hit down back two one two, specifically on the second hit. The second hit counter hit makes this guaranteed. The counter hit on this that I discovered last time, right? Well, that's not your combo out of that, but you get the idea. And it's probably a counter hit down forward 1-4, right? He has, like, you know, counter hit knockdown strings, so counter hit bonus damage strings attached to safe stuff or stuff that isn't awful on block. So, like in the case of down 3-4, uh, that is negative 11. And if you block the low, you can interrupt that second kick with 11 frames. If you block the low by itself, though, it's negative 16. So you probably generally want to finish that string. Oh, the string sniper, the stream sniper is live, young peep. Ha! Right? Uh, did I miss anything? Is it possible to sidestep down from crouch? Uh, no. Asura Senki, no. If you're in a crouch state, whether it's because you put yourself there or you forced your opponent there and they, they got put in there, uh, you can only sidestep instantly towards the uh, for, uh, uh, background, sorry. You cannot sidestep instantly towards the foreground. See, this recovers ducking. I can't do it. I have to cancel it with like a dash or a back dash. Like if I tap up, I'm going to sidestep. I can't tap up and go down. So a, da a forward dash or a back dash could totally do it. But if you want to instantly sidestep, you have to go up. So this actually, I talked about this last time, but I'll talk about it again. This determines what your best follow-ups will be off of certain situations, for example, Dragonos down one. If you, uh, this is zero on block, which sets up counter hit one, two, one if your opponent mashes, right? Because uh, typically for while standing, outside of a few cases, the fastest moves that people have from while standing are 11 frames, right? Uh, so if uh, they decide to sidestep out of this, well, hey, if I force my opponent uh, to crouch with a down one and I'm on one piece side and I know that they're on two piece side which you cannot verify online you have to like pay attention online to how people size up to know because everybody online could pick the one piece side so even though you see it as two piece side they could be on the one piece side and it'll look all fucking weird either way it goes uh, let's just assume you're playing against a friend or you're playing offline let's assume you're playing offline and you're on the one piece side well Dragnos down one is probably a little bit better to, uh, uh, on the uh, one piece side because his tr wait it's probably better on the 2 piece side because his tracking to his right is better. Let me switch sides. His tracking on this side is much better. Wait, did I get this right? Yeah, my right side. Yeah. So to show you an example of that, if I make him block the elbow and try to sidestep, stand guard, right? And try to sidestep uh, his left, right? So see, he's going to try to go left, right? Right, so uh, for some reason, up forward four tracks really good to his right. Don't ask me why. This tracks, this tracks, this track. These are all really fucking good moves, and they all track to that side. I don't even know what else. Does that track? That tracks? What else? Did I do down forward two already? And of course, down two tracks. All of his lows track. All of them track. I did that already, right? See? Really dangerous moves all track to Dragon Ball's right side. Now let's flip the script here. So, right. So now the AI is going to... Oh, sorry. See, the AI makes it look weird, but it's a delay. If you can see here. See, the AI is like recovering, standing, and then going down. You inputting-wise cannot do that. So the AI is like lying to you here. Make sure you set it appropriately. So now he can only go right. So now he's going towards my left, right? Well, up forward four is supposed to be able to track to the to his left side, but it's inconsistent. There are times where people get under it. It happens all the fucking time. If you watched Aris play, you probably heard him whine about how it whiffs people going in that direction all the time. But theoretically, it is supposed to go in that direction. Of course, he has homie moves too. But now look, let's look at all those moves from before. Down forward two. Nope. Back forward three. Yeah, because back forward three is a little fucking weird. Down forward one. Nope. Down forward one would have tracked to the other side. I forgot to test that. Um, down back 2-1? Nope. 
So yeah. So look at it. All these moves now whiff. So now I have to rely on like homing move or the low, high or low. The only mid that uh, tracks is that uh, up forward four, really. And I guess back four, th yeah. See, back four three is fucking weird. It whiffed that time. Back four three is weird. It's not supposed to track in that direction, but sometimes he'll just clip people. Uh, it seems like it's supposed to really track towards Dragonall's right side. But you get the idea here. I have less options to cover it, sidestep in that direction. Not to mention the opponent could always just sidestep in and block. So if I'm trying to, like, for example, do this, right? They could sidestep, block, and then duck the high, and then launch me, right? If, if, they, if they read, if they have a read that I'm going to be doing that to counter sidestepping. How negative is Coral Circle 4 with 2 on block? Negative 14. All right, if I recall right. Sorry, negative 13. Yeah, that used to be negative 14, right? Negative 13. Ah, I didn't understand why I was humping the ground. Well, there you go. Yo, did Young P go online? Yeah, he did. I mentioned it earlier. The stream sniper. I don't mind. You can talk about other, other streamers here. But as always... Feel free to ask questions, even if it's not Dragon Ball related. Feel free to ask me why I suck. Feel free to ask me why Miguel sucks. I still believe in Miguel. I think he can win a tournament if a really good player is playing at their absolute fucking best. <laughs> Miguel could totally win a tournament. You just got to really be a Miguel loyalist. Uh, I'm just talking shit because I've been playing a little bit of Miguel lately. I just learned him. All right, so Separator... I talked about how you could counter and confirm it, right? So next, uh, separator, send the guard. Down four one doesn't combo. You need to counter hit to get to, to get to the point where down four one even combos. And down four one is uh, negative eleven. Down four one three is a negative sixteen. And I don't think this jails. Let me see. If I was at pause there. Let's see. No jail. Uh. Okay, so if you block the second high, the third kick jails at the very least. But it's negative 16, dude. It's negative 16. I don't know if it was this bad before, but that's fucking horrendous. Holy shit. Huh. <sighs> The first kick by itself is good. And if I'm not mistaken, it's guaranteed after his command grab. One of his command grabs. This one. Uh, you got to input it perfectly if you don't want the second hit, though. So I think that's supposed to be guaranteed, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. They changed the Oki off of that throw, but I don't think he had this guaranteed before. Yeah, it hits you in the rear. So down four is guaranteed. Uh, this is my main. Uh, excuse me. This is my main, and I'm so stuck with him losing to so many matches. But I know what his punishes are and use the shit out of his down two. But I still lose. I think it's because my Korean backdash is kind of fucked. Well, I mean, you know... Back, Korean backdash is one thing, but like, what are you losing to? Maybe it's just matchup knowledge. Maybe there's something to do with your decision making, right? Like, the general Dragon Ball game plan revolves around being able to threaten with while running two from all distances, right? All ranges. Here, 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 here. And when you're able to do that shit, you make people afraid to swing when you run up. So that opens up run up, down two, right? <laughs> run up, down two. And then you, you you get that those two those are the big two moves and then that opens up the rest of his offense where he just has a lot of really good moves. Back four three, uh back two one, back two by itself is good, down forward one is good, uh down one is good, you know. Down forward four is good. Four one is really good. It opens up all of that shit for you. One one three is a good string. Two one 
And so the follow-ups, if you delay him, well, it's pretty good. Not amazing, but good. He just has a lot of ways to open people up with pokes. He can poke people to death. You, you don't even need a land of launcher with this character to fuck people up. He's just really good. <laughs> so uh, it's probably like your decision. I mean, sure, you need a clean backdash cancel, but, you know, that's not always the answer. Some people may think it's the answer, but you might be missing something more, right? Did, for example, did you know that you could hit confirm back four three if you do this? It's laggy as hell, though. Hold on. Oh, that's a hit confirm. Oh, that's a hit confirm. You could turn a very strong knockdown move that people could duck on block into a hit confirm. Stuff like that. That'll help you, right? And you could do that off of your own block. When you make them block a jab, you could do that when you make them block a down forward one. You could do that when you make them block a down two. Uh, sorry, a down one. You could do that when you connect a down two. You could just sidestep it to back four and easily confirm a whiff. Although, you know, that might be a little rough because while standing fours, you tend to have to sidestep a little deeper than you do for a jab, let's say. But yeah. Uh, I know which way to sidestep most characters. I know matchup nods against most used characters. I personally think I'm better at some green racks, in my opinion. Not trying to be cocky, but I do my homework. And I'm close to doing while running to it all ranges 100% of the time. All right, well, that's another thing. So you're mentioning a lot about matchups, right? But matchups are fine, but do you play your opponent? Matchups are fine, but at the end of the day, you need to outplay your opponent, right? So if I'm like, oh, this character is weak to sidestep left or whatever, random shit, right? And I, that means I'm going to sidestep left. Well, when they start doing their things that cover sidestep left, do you every once in a while go, hey, this guy is using that specific move to beat out my side step left. Maybe I should beat that specific move, right? Instead of just thinking about the what the usual Dragon Ball shit is or the usual whatever your opponent is, right? You got to start thinking about it that way. If you watch me play online, when I win, and also partially p the reason that I lose is I kind of just let my opponent kill themselves, always. I kind of just stand back and wait to see what you do, and I'm going to play based on what I see you do. I don't really force the issue. Um, that's one thing that I have to improve on. My defense in general is not great, but I still get a lot of wins against a lot of players just by, like, letting them hang themselves, basically, right? As long as I execute properly and get the reads properly, right? At the end of the day, um, I have to get better at forcing that issue also. Sometimes you want to force it, sometimes you don't. Korean backdash, back right uh, If you're doing the down back cancel for Korean backdash, I don't know what that down forward is. You meant down back, I guess. If you're doing the down back uh, cancel for Korean backdash, you don't need two back inputs. You do back, back, down, back, back. Because down back is a back input. So now, I can't do it that way. I got a quarter circle back, as you can see. But I use the sway method that I came up with that... If you use the sway method and you cancel it with a perfect down input, then you have to double tap back every time. If you're not canceling it with down, if you're canceling it with a perfect down back, you don't double tap back. You do back, back, down, back, back, down, back, back, down, back, back, because down back is a back input. I can't do that, though. I've never been good at that. Maybe if uh, I'm, I'm going to get a hitbox, I don't give a fuck what people say. Because my wrist has been hurting a lot. I do plan on eventually getting a hitbox. And that will make it a lot easier to get a perfect backdash cancel. Put it that way. I mean, people are playing on fucking keyboard. Like, Romailer plays on keyboard. I think he still does. That's basically a hitbox. <laughs> Fuck off, haters. So anyway, uh, that's enough about down 413. Down 4 tracks really well to both sides. See, it tracks really well to both sides. 
Down four by itself is bad on block, though. Negative 15. But it's fast. Uh, what up, Isaac Locke? What up, Manny? Do you think it's worth learning stick compared coming from pad? Uh, I think it's worth playing whatever you want to play on. There are a lot of really good players that play on pad, and I have no issue with people that play on pad. I do have... Uh, I don't have an issue with button binders, but I do get the reason that other people have issues because like, when I started playing second in the arcades, second five, Chinatown Fair had the cabinets that you could plug PS2 uh, controls into. And that didn't allow you to button map. It didn't allow you to change any buttons. You were forced to use the four face buttons, and that was it. And you get to eat shit otherwise. So you button binders. <laughs> you might have a rough transition going into stick, I guess, if you get too used to button binding, but whatever. A lot of really good players do fine without button binding on pad. Fighting GM, Anakin. But then we got me button binding in the fucking tournament on his arcade stick for Steve. So it's like, at what point are people just going to give it up and let people do what they want to do as long as it's not cheating? You know what I'm saying? Anyway, Stiletto, down 4-4. Four, four. This move used to be a lot more useful. Um, I see a lot of people finish this, and I have yet to duck this once in my life. There's no mix-up. Down 4 only goes into a high here. But this is also a counter hit string. Knocks down, they could roll that back. If they don't roll that back, you get a free hit. In most situations, at least. I don't know about the mid stage situation. Yeah, see? If they don't hold back, uh, I don't know what you'll get. It might have to be near the wall. Might just be a dash up stomp. No, that stomp is too slow. It might just be a run up down three like that. That's probably guaranteed. Yeah, that's guaranteed. So if you don't hold back, he gets a free little low hit for 10 damage. So you got to hold back. The cool thing about that is that's a free whiff. You see how far away I am? I can't punish him for whiffing that down three. So there's no reason not to do it, I guess. It's not like when them holding back is going to give you any amazing okie. Okay. They're going to be so, too far away for you to really do anything. If you try to run up two, that's an easy like, sidewalk. Or easy um, counter hit bait. You can just interrupt that shit. So. All right, so Stiletto is uh, used to be a decent juggle ender, but I don't know how it is now. It would be like cancel out of that, and it whiffs in a lot of instances. But it used to be a really high damage juggle ender because the second kick is uh, does a lot of damage. It still kind of does for this game, but before in like tag two, this shit was like thirty plus damage on that last kick. And in second six also. It was a lot of damage on that last kick. Uh, but I don't know what the purpose is of this move now. I mean, I guess it's there. It's not the mo it's not super useful, but he has better tools. So, you know. I don't see any real reason to, like, use this too much. It is negative 15, but look at all his range. Maybe Noctis can launch that. Uh, but most of the cast will un be unable to launch this or even maybe punish it at all. So, you know, if people have pro problems punishing the shoulder on block, they're going to have problems punishing this shit on block. Uh, of course, it does not jail either, like I said. Even if he hits you. <clears throat> Even if he hits you. Ugh. Let me try this other method. Oops. I fucked up. Now I'm doing juggles. <laughs> like 63 damage. I think the regular juggle is like 62. Ugh, ugly. Sixty-one. So two more damage than that. 
And uh, the oak, there's no oaky because he knocks them away. So it's like, fucking whatever. And I think the shoulder ender does like a lot of damage now. So it's like even less useful. Uh, mixed box arcade. You saw us before? Yeah, that's the one with the keyboard buttons for movement and the arcade stick buttons for everything else. Yeah, I've seen it. <laughs> it's interesting. I don't, I don't, I, I'm not interested in it, but I think it's interesting. I need big buttons for my sausage fingers. I don't need small keyboard buttons cramped together. You know what I'm saying? I need big wide buttons so I could separate my fingers and claw that shit like this. Arr. Death's door. <laughs> so I showed earlier that this this move is a solid option to track to drag to dragon off's right. Another thing about this move is you could delay each hit a lot. This is also his wall combo, one of his best wall combos, where you do the first two hits and you delay the last hit so it's a low wall hit. You'll get a, a lot of damage out of it, right? Uh, another thing about this, since you could delay every hit, this is important. If the second hit counter hits, the third hit is a juggle starter, right? It's going to combo. The third hit is also a juggle starter on normal hit. So the best pickup is like an instant while standing four, I think. But that's not easy to do. Luckily, this is second seven, so you could just, you know, do that. Or whatever the hell else you want to do out of that. So you don't have to do the usual shit like before. Before, if you didn't get while standing four, you got the shitty down two while standing four, down four, one, three juggle. The, 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 basically, the old sweep juggle. Now both sweep and that string gets you a full combo if you pick up a down two. Although I believe that if you're a little off axis or if you're a little bit far away, then uh, this whiffs. Back one, two whiffs. Or just it might whiff on some characters with short legs. Like let's say Kuma. Bears. But in general, that is your juggle. You kind of need to adapt. If it looks like they're going to be too far away for you to do back one, two. Then end it with like a down four, four or a down four, one, three. Get your damage. Uh, so the first two hits natural combo plus one on hit on block the first two hits are negative ten You could totally punish that shit so even if he delays I think if he delays a third hit let's see Can you still fit the jab punish in? No, you can't so the, the key hit to delay is the second hit. That is the key hit to delay in this string. If he doesn't delay it at all, then I believe he interrupts your jab. Yeah, see? Counter hit. The whole thing on block is negative 14. I'm gonna try a crazy 14 frame punish. Nope. <laughs> you can make that 14 frames. <laughs> I've done this before. In tag two, I think. I did instant shoulder for, not during a match, but in practice. I, I managed to get it a couple times. On pad, though. I was playing on pad at the time. And doing like instant uh, shoulder off of a roll dash is much easier on pad. By the way, um, now that I talked about Road Dash a little bit, there's one thing I want to talk about with Dragon Off in general in regards to Road Dash. For those of you that don't know what a Road Dash is, it's basically Dragon Off and a couple other characters have a Crouch Dash. Not a traditional Crouch Dash like a Mishima or Bob or Huarang where it's forward, neutral, down, down, forward. Road Dash is core circle forward because you're rolling the stick. And they got this unique animation that you cannot, uh, you could cancel that out of it after a bit of startup. Not instantly, though. Not like you can with the... It's not like free-flowing like a typical cross dash is, like a, you know, wave dash. So that's why there's no roll wave dash. There's no such thing. You know, yeah, you kind of do it over and over again, but it's not like a wave dash, you know? You can't block at any time during this like you can during a wave dash. Uh, the reason I'm bringing that up right now is any character that has that, this is an issue that I have. I have an issue inputting perfect diagonal inputs. 
uh, I often get quarter circle forward or down and down forward. For Dragunov, you don't even need a quarter circle forward. You see how it's... There it is. You see how the last uh, inputs are down and then down forward? If you're using the numerical system 2-3, right, for movement. That gives you the roll dash. And that's often when I try to low parry, that's what I get. So if I try to do, for example, one of those situations where I want to low parry to stand block, you have to input that shit perfectly. If you don't, you get this. And then you're going to get hit. So that's just one little thing you got to know about dragging off in general. It's going to get in the way of those situations. If you're not perfect with your low parry input, it might get in the way and, uh, of those situations where you try to low parry into stand block. Keep that in mind. Uh, WASD is pretty good for tech, in my opinion. But I got small baby hands. Do you know all the characters? No, I don't, Asura Senki. But if you have a question about a specific character, ask. I might know. Um, is that similar to Paul's? Yes. Paul has a road dash. Correct. Uh, yeah, okay. No, I do not know all characters. If you scroll down and you see my YouTube, what I'm doing here, I've done with most of the cast by now. And I plan on doing the whole cast eventually. In case you're wondering about me, I've been playing Tekken. I learned, I started to learn Tekken and, and fighting games in general in the Tekken DR days. I started going to Chata Fair in New York City. I live in Manhattan. When Tekken 5.0 came out, I started to go there frequently and then I met some of the local players and that's how I started learning fighting games. And I was always really shitty. I was one of those people that never did shit. And I still am pretty shitty, but... I've been playing this series for a while. I just didn't like Tekken 6. I didn't like Tag 2. And I like this one. So now I've learned all the shit I've learned throughout the years. I'm actually trying to apply it to help other people and to help myself learn all of the characters. Now, when I say learn all the characters, I don't mean fucking master all the characters. I mean just taking a look at their move list, move by move, frame data, break it down. I'm going to forget all this shit the next time I fight a dragon over. Uh... <laughs> Or whoever. Maybe not Dragonov, because I, I actually played Dragonov before. Marduk was my main. But I'm going to forget all this shit like we all are. But at least I'll have like a reference point to look back on. Or maybe it'll be in the back of my memory mid-match. Like, what was that on my... That was unsafe, right? And then I could like work based off of that. You know, I have something rather than nothing. So yeah. And no, I'm not a competitive player. Nor do I think I am good. I just think I know enough to help other people including people better than me i've already done that before i used to t teach people how to beat marduk in tattoo when they would ask me shit like what do i gotta do against marduk yeah you just do this and you sidestep left and block and then you fuck him up it's not really that simple but you know all right so down back two one two we talked about that tracks to dragon all's right side remember that um i think the second hit tracks to his other side doesn't it Like, uh, yeah, see, yeah, not that you're gonna want to finish it, but it does track to his left side also. The second hit, but you cannot obviously, if you block the first hit, you're not gonna be able to size it unless you pro unless he probably heavily delays it, then you probably can sidestep it. There it is, see? So that's another option if you want to launch people for delaying it. You can do that. Unless you're Gigas, maybe. Oh, he's at an angle, so it's going to whiff. Oh, yeah. Another thing for you Dragon Ball players. You might notice from watching Ares, but you got to adjust your juggle when you're off axis like that. You got to do like a single jab. Up, cancel, forward three, whatever. Ah, what's up, Bosley? No porn allowed. So, Death Store is a good move. Clipping sweep. 
Uh, this is one of those moves that people call snake edge. It's not a snake edge, bro. It doesn't. It's not a homing move. It doesn't launch you from the tip. It's not a snake edge. Not a snake edge. Everybody calls a snake edge. Like I get because a lot of people join in, like join up a Tekken now, and they they hear the uh, common things that people call things like every running throw is a shining wizard. Yeah. People call it, uh, thanks for, oh, Bosley, thanks for the follow. Did you follow me before? Well, thanks for the follow. Um, so a lot of the newer players, like, <clears throat> no pants, uh, like to call, like to try to, like, name shit themselves because, oh, they don't know any better, right? So they'll call this a snake edge. That's not a snake edge. What is a snake edge? Snake edge, homing, launches at the tip regardless of range. Start to juggle on normal hit. Just because it's a low that starts to juggle on normal hit does not make it a snake edge. This used to not even give him a full juggle, unless you broke the floor with uh, while standing four. It's a oh, wow. He recovered standing now. I forgot. Uh, he used to recover crouching, and you would have to while standing four down three four to break the floor. Of course, everybody knows now. He just he gets a full juggle because he could jab people. Before he would need big characters or medium big characters like King and Armor King to get a jab into a full juggle. Most of the time, his juggle was this. That was the old juggle, right? For 60 damage in tag two. Now that's only 51 because of the scaling. Of course, everybody knows now you do down two while standing four jab into whatever, or uh, down two while standing four to back one two into whatever. Everybody knows this now, right? That's the that, that's the juggle, and then you dash up and do whatever you're gonna do based on wherever you are on the stage. Uh, they nerfed this move. It was always considered seeable, but now it's uh, considered extra seeable because it's uh, the startup is a little bit slower than it used to be. It's uh, 27 frames on startup, although I thought it was slower than that actually. So this is seeable. It's a little difficult, but it is seeable. This is not a mix-up tool. Neither is the cancel. You could cancel that with uh, by inputting one plus two, down back three, one plus two, and then you could cancel the grab by holding back. I think, right? How do you cancel? Or down. There it is. You can cancel that by holding down. Cancel the grab. You have to do the grab. Sweet grab, hold down, and then you can press back afterwards. Uh, which is kind of goofy and gimmicky. Uh, the crouch grab is a 1 plus 2 break, in case you're wondering. too slow i'm trying to just see the there it is wow the grab animation is like kind of hard to see but that's it the, uh, the throw break animation so the reason why it's not a mix-up is i could just swing at you delayed whoa it froze for me for a second there see See? See? This is the drill that you want to do if you're practicing anti dragon off. This is the drill. Because even if he cancels into standing, uh, into crouching, I mean, he'll get hit, I believe. Yeah, see, punish. See? He does not recover in time, even with the cancel. It's still a punish. So it has nothing to do with my input. He just does not recover in time to uh, be able to block that. What's going on, Frozen Zerker? Yeah, I had no idea that's not a snake edge. It looks the same, so I kind of grouped it with... Oh, that's why I'm, like, sending out the signal. Although, at this point, I'm the one holding on to, like, the old man shit, because who am I to stop all the new players, right? Everybody's going to say what they're going to want to say, but... There's a reason why you need to categorize these moves. At least I feel like it. There's like the same reason I get anal about parry versus reversal versus actual attack reversal. Because they serve different purposes. Sabakis. They serve different purposes mechanically. They don't all work the same. Jin's parry is not the same as Asuka's attack reversal. They have they work completely different. So that's just me being anal though. Because like you got even people like Aris doing that shit now right and he's gonna have the you know the kind of influence to spread that so <sighs> so 
So yeah, that's a little anti Dragonov tip. You don't have to fall for all this for this uh, sweep shit. But the sweep is still good. Oh yeah, it all, it does have a lot of weaknesses beyond that. First, let's test the tracking. I never tested the tracking on this. Okay, as it should. Okay, what about walk? All right, nothing for walk. Okay, so walk is actually good versus it in either direction, preferably right. So the reason I say that, even though it hit going this way, is it didn't knock down. And you can back that shoot. That's another weakness. Just like Paul's demolition, man, it doesn't matter if he doesn't sweep you because he's negative. Paul's demolition, man, doesn't combo. And in this case, he doesn't combo and he's in negative. Negative six, sometimes negative seven. He's safe, but he's negative. So keep that in mind. You can always backdash. If you're worried about a sweep coming, he has to get right up in your face for it. So even if you can't see it, backdash will get you out of dodge. <clears throat> and of course, on block, it's awful. What is it? Negative 26. You're going to get a delayed hop kick from that. I could have finished that. Damn, that's hard to do in that situation. We could totally get that. Or you could just do your typical while standing launcher and get him. Everybody in the game will be able to get a launch out of that. Everybody. Doesn't matter who you are. You will be able to launch that on block. Uh, next. So we already went through clipping heel hook. Oh yeah, by the way, about that sweep on counter hit. No, uh, if you're too far for it to knock down a normal hit, on counter hit and knocks down. Forgot about this. As far as uh, the pickup, it might still be the same, but it. Yeah, you can still do the usual pickup. Up close if it counter hits. 55 damage hit throw, and then it ends there. Uh, I believe this has some Oki. Maybe not. Let's see what reaches. Oh, my button is stuck. Always issues with this stick. Okay. Yeah, nothing reaches. What the hell? My two button. I, I, I always have fucking issues with this stick. Don't buy Etoki Omni. This stick sucks. What the fuck? It's like something got stuck in there and the button was, was getting mushy. All right. Maybe I just have the worst luck. I'm trying to see if you get a slight dash and still clip him. Alright, well, he doesn't have anything crazy, but you can totally do a slight dash into a down, uh, a down two versus whatever mid mix up. So you have something. Got gunk in your buttons? Yeah, man. Uh, Renell, uh, you got your Tekken bot prime to work after the second? Yeah, I did. I uh, edited the, the INI file. No, I just had bad luck. I mean, how many Koreans have these sausage fingers that this big-ass Dominican New Yorker that weighs 300 pounds does? Not too many of them, I imagine. So my fucking ham hawks banging on these buttons isn't helping things, I'm sure. But I will say that... I've had the Mad Cats TE1 for both PS3 and 360, and the Mad Cats TE2 for the PS4, and I never had the, all the issues I've been having with this E-Toki Omni. I also had the Mad Cats Korean Edition stick on the PS3. I still have it over there. I could bust that out right now and probably play this. Never, never had any issues with the buttons. It's now that I'm having all these issues with the E-Toki Omni that I paid $200 plus $50 to ship it from Korea. All that money, and I'm having all these issues. 
So maybe I just got a fucking lemon, but then I replaced buttons and I'm still having issues. So is, am I crazy? Is there something wrong with the casing, the way it holds the buttons and stuff? I don't fucking know. Maybe I just I just got bad luck. I don't know. Well, anyway. So on counter here, it seems like you do a slight dash into a down two and it'll, it'll reach in time. But they will be able to block it, so be careful. <laughs> and being able to uh, dash up into a down two will give you the opening to dash up into a mid. That's the general idea of the Oki in that situation. Nothing guaranteed, though, as far as I can tell. Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. Actually, let me test one more thing. Oh, Juice Box is live if you guys are interested in KOF. Nah. See, that's the thing about 444. It's an Oki tool, man. It's super linear. Super fucking linear. All right. So that's a clipping sweep. That's the grab out of the clipping sweep. We went through that already. Pommel swing. This is one of his best new moves in Tekken Tag uh, 2. They gave him this Tekken Tag 2. Really good move. And it tracks pretty damn well, I believe. Man, look at that. Okay, so you could go right, but not left. Ooh, the first hit at least tracks left. And the second hit does not. Ugh. So maybe you don't want to uh, you don't want to rely on this for the tracking. Uh, it is negative thirteen, which is not too bad. You know, people unless you run into some god like Kazuya player, nobody's gonna launch you for this except for you know Akuma, Eliza, those characters that fuck you up with meter. They'll be able to fuck you up for this, right? But for the most part, nobody else, right? Um, it does good damage, tw uh, 32 damage, and it spins, so it gets a wall splat, and even without the wall splat, he's super plus off of that spin, plus 10. Sets up while running two, dash up down two. While running two will interrupt everything. Dash up into down two will not interrupt everything, but still good. Um, the first hit by itself, oh, I lost track of what I was doing for a second there. First hit by self is negative 10. I did not know that. I think this is a nerf. I think in tag 2 this was safe. All right. Another, all right. Yeah. So it's actually negative 10. Go figure. So another thing about this is worth noting. Is if you look at the animation. Um, it doesn't crush, but if you space this move out a little bit, it avoids a lot of shit. It really does. It has decent range, too. And, of course, it's also a corkscrew move if you hit him out of the air. The startup is 15 frames, so that's not going to work. Oh, 17 frames? There it is. Find that sweet spot. So short range mids and like jabs. Even that standing four whiff. You saw that? So long range highs too. If he spaces out well, you could make it pretty damn evasive. But now that I know that the first hit is unsafe, I'd be a, I'll, I'd personally be less willing to use it that way. I used to use this first hit a lot to fuck with people in tag two. But now that I know it's negative 10 and only plus one on hit, uh, not that great. Still, it's a nice chunk of damage, good range, and it's a solid juggle tool. Electric, Kazuya's perfect electric is 13 frames, but you have to be a fucking beyond godlike Kazuya player to actually do that. You're not going to see that very often. Cody Vu has been known to try to punish block hop kicks with Kazuya's electric. If you see Cody Vu block an electric and do like down forward two, he was trying to fucking launch it. <laughs> That's a Cody Vu special. Uh, and he's, he has done it from what I've heard. I don't know if he's done it in tournament matches. But people have told me that he's done that shit in sessions. In local sessions against people. He'll fucking do it. He don't care. He's like, yeah, fuck it. I can, sure, I could get a 1 plus 2 with Kazuya. Or back 1, 2 would probably be the preferred punish. But I'm going to get a fucking electric. Dodia, motherfucker. But the other electrics do not. The other electrics are 14 frames fastest. Only Kazuya has the 13 frame electric. And that's why he's able to get a full launch off of counter hit down forward too. Uh, so yeah, that's that for Pommel Swing. Next is Eye Gouge to Stingray. So this is an Eye Gouge apparently. I suppose it would be if he were to hit you crouching. 
Because it looks like he's trying to stick the thumb out. You see that thumb is up in the air? He's trying to fucking get the thumb to the eye. Cheater. So this is a mid-high. Does not jail. 15 frame startup. The first hit is popular to use in a neutral because it's only negative three. And it, he recovers crouching. So he could like uh, size if you try to press anything. Or he could just do something like this from full crouch. Which is risky, but whatever. That too. He could hit you with a low from full crouch. Or he could go right into wall standing four if you try to do something too slow to catch him sidestepping, for example. So, it's a popular thing to do. And people are like, oh, they're going to be afraid of the second hit. That's another reason why. Uh, the second hit on block is uh, it's negative 5, so it's safe. There's no real reason to be afraid of the second hit. There's no counter hit properties on it. I mean, yeah, he has a third hit, but it doesn't combo on counter hit. It does, however, combo in the back. That's guaranteed. What's not guaranteed is you hitting them in the back with the sweep. They could turn around in time to get hit in the front. Just to show you guys, right? I'm going to hold down back after he hits me. See? Can't do it. Now, if you want to see uh, something really dumb, it doesn't matter in this game like I used to. The thing that turns you around fastest in this game is attacking. So if you don't want to get counter hit, you could grab and you'll turn around. See? Now I'm, now I'm facing him. <laughs> if you mash a grab during this string, you could turn around and face him. This used to be a thing in Tag 2. To fuck with the Dragon Ball player, if he got you in the back, he would have to adjust his juggle. Because if he hits you in the, in the rear with it, he would have to go right into while standing four. But now he will get a juggle either way, I think. Oh, he recovers standing now. Ugh, I keep forgetting. Oh, boy. But the thing is, I don't know what the juggle would be in the back. This might not even be worth doing anymore if you can't get a juggle. Um... Music is over. Let me switch it up. Yeah, that's my KOF music. Let's go to the Kazuya music. Kazuya? What the fuck? Yakuza <laughs> music. <laughs> Kazuya. Cash when I play Kazuya 6. Did I miss any questions? Hold on a second. Uh, I thought about switching to Crown Levers. Blah, 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 blah. So, uh, my TES plus bricked. You got bricked. Huh. Got a Hori A trap for Kai. That's good shit. Electrical punish 13. Yeah, I said that already. Is it possible to know if he did only the first hit and still punish it? If you're talking about with down back two, no, you just kind of got to read your opponent. With down back two or back one, you have to read your opponent. He cannot delay back one, too, by the way. He cannot delay that. So they have to commit after pressing the first button. Uh, this string, it's a snake edge, fucked me up so much when I was newer. Yes, that is a new trap. I'll get to it in a second. It's one of the first ones I really labbed up to beat, and man, did it feel good to finally blow people up. Yeah, you gotta love the real straightforward, like, the first uh, gimmicks that you'll learn to blow up as a Tekken player will more than likely be strings into lows, especially ones that do not have mids attached to them. Those are the first things you're gonna lab blowing up, and it's gonna feel good when you start to beat them. Why did Howard actually choose Noctis over Kiryu? Well, I don't know. I don't make the decisions. I think Noctis is fun to play, personally. Even if I don't like how he looks. Who's Kiryu? He's the main character of... of I almost called it Kazuya. Yakuza. The Yakuza series. Which is where this music I'm starting to play now is from. Anyway. Kazuma Kiryu. So anyway. Um, so yeah. Uh, back 2 one by itself is good. Uh, another thing about Back 2... Uh, you might know this already. Uh, the old wall combo for Dragonoff, and sometimes people still use it, and I don't really know why. It might be forced a habit. Since back two recovers crouching, you can press back two and hold two, 
and go right into the wall standing one plus two shoulder by holding two and inputting one. And that's his wall combo because it automatically sets up the shoulder to connect as a low wall hit to get the rescale damage. So that's his old wall combo that sometimes I still see people use, and I can't give you guys a good reason why. Because he has down back 2-1-2, two, two, really, and that's way better. Um, but since back 2 uh, recovers crouching, it is a way to get, like, one more damage to pick up off of this. So forward 1 plus 2, if you run up and do back 2-1, what is that? Thir uh, 34. But if you do back 2 while standing 1, it's 35. And you get the same juggles, basically. See? And you, oh, you can't do that again. <clears throat> it takes the course score already. <clears throat> Too bad that um, launcher gives you a lot less damage in this game, but fuck it. So that launcher's actually been nerfed. Uh, but I'll get there. So then we talked about the gimmicks of this move, which is... The sweep, which has all the same cancels as his regular sweep. He can cancel it into a throw. He can cancel it into standing. Same way. He can do all the same shit. So the same rules apply. There is no mid option out of this string. There is no mid option. You could duck it because it doesn't jail. Or, or since once you hear him go s, you could low crush it. Maybe not with that because it does have a tendency to do that kind of thing with shitty hitbox moves. And a shitty hitbox move, and an example of a shitty hitbox move is a delayed hop kick, unfortunately. But if you have a hop kick, you can totally not respect this. The moment you hear him go, S -s -s, you can input. As long as the first two hits do not hit you, if you block it, the moment you hear him go, S -s -s, if you're fast enough, you can blow this shit up. Wow. There you go. New move. And then you can practice this. Same frequency. Not too hard. It's not too hard, guys. Remember, I have shitty reactions. Especially you guys have been watching for a while. You know this. My reactions are trash. It's not that hard. Don't let fucking Dragon Ball play. Dude, don't let yesterday I was playing, I let a Dragon Ball player get away with this. Don't let him get away with this shit. <laughs> don't. Either hop kick it or block it. Block it is probably a safer option because then you don't have that nine frame margin for error on the low crush. Oh, whoops. And to make this an even better example, let's do this. not that hard especially if you're listening for it a lot of people ignore audio cues in Tekken but trust me they go a long way if you use them well <sighs> I wonder if cross cancel beats that string it's a snake edge what string it's a snake oh you're doing what I said not to do you're calling it a snake edge uh, what's up rich homie Baji Kwan hey Biggs what were some of the style differences between king and armor king uh, that's a random question that doesn't have any importance anymore. <laughs> uh, you know how King currently has forward 2-1? Armor King used to have that. So, and King, current King's down 3, Armor King used to have that. So, Armor King, also, Armor King has a standard down forward 1 poke. Like this. 13 frames. And Armor King had dark upper, so he had a WGF. Regular WGF. 14 frame Punisher. Um... And Armor King had a regular wave dash. So if you uh, you could actually force the same instant with Shining Wizard uh, or versus uh, wave dash into a giant swing. You could totally do that shit. Um, Armor King had his own version of giant swing where he would grab you as a double underarm. Think like the pedigree from Triple H. He would hold, double underhook you and then he would do a giant swing while holding you that way and throw a toss your ass. 
Uh, and Armor King also had a Lars style sweep, down back three. Uh, Lars is down back four. Armor King basically had that with his down back three. It was plus on hit, and on counter hit, he got a juggle. Armor King was a better poking character. I would argue that in tag two, Armor King was the better overall character. Armor King also had this very obnoxious cartwheel when you press three plus four into an elbow. He would do like a, the, 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 um, the Sasuke. Is it the Sasuke special? Whatever. He would do the cartwheel, and the cartwheel would do a kick, Lily style. And then you would press two, and then he would do a jumping back elbow. And that was a natural combo. And when it hits you, he would kick up. <laughs> but if you blocked it, he would fall, on, and you could punish him. In Tekken 6, he could do this and make it safe. They nerfed it in tag two. So he had this really high damage cartwheel, low crushing shit from across the screen into a back elbow that was safe on block. <laughs> that shit was fucked up. Uh, and he could just do the first cartwheel kick, even if he, whether it hits you or block you, it didn't matter. He could do the first cartwheel kick and he would land back turn right in front of you and do the generic low, or he would do a back turn throw. Why does this matter? Because before this game, Generic throws. It's, this is still the case, by the way. If I were to, uh, just to show you guys, if I were just to show you uh, back, right? So you see this? Look at my hands. That looks like a 1 plus 2 break, doesn't it? This is 2 plus 4. This is 1 plus 3. Those are the generic throws. In this game, it doesn't matter because you just press one or two. And you already know that Dragunov doesn't have a command grab on his back's turn. In tag two, you had to guess one or two. And it looked like one plus two when your back turned. So King, Armor King could cartwheel, back turn to grab you, and then you would have to guess a 50-50 on the throw break. King has his own version of Dom Mac 3, you're right. But it's not like Armor King's. It, Armor King's was faster, I think. But they, bo they both have similar applications. <clears throat> Armor King was very good. Armor King was very good. Very, very good. Yeah, Feng still has it, but that's because he has a command grab. He doesn't have... Before, Feng would have a three-way guessing game because you would have to guess one plus two in the command grab or one versus two for the generic throws. Now it's a 50-50. So Feng doesn't have it in the same way. King, uh, Armor King was really fucking good. Really, really, really good. He also had a cross dash three, which was a high unblockable kick that wall splatted, and it was fairly fast. He'd do like a little skip, and then he would do a high kick really fast, and it could wall splat you. So if he, can't, you know, he and he had a lot of tools to make you afraid of like getting wall splatted, like forward two one and shit. He also had his own version of back one two that has the same application, counter hit juggle starter. His counter hit combo on back one was cool because. What you had to do was it would it would knock people out. They would hold their mouth and fall to their knees and fall down. You had to like backstep and then do the do the cartwheel over their body, and you would land behind them and hit them in the legs and then continue the juggle. It looked really cool. <laughs> it was a little annoying to do, but you know, while wow, regular King just did whatever off of the back one counter hit, <clears throat> and it was also his twelve frame Punisher. So anyway, back to Dragonov. Serrated Edge, this is his homing move that now works as a uh, corkscrew. Before it was just a homing move that knocked, I think it just used to knock down. I might be wrong, but I think this used to just knock down. But this is just a good safe on block high homing move that's 14 frames, so it's very fast. Negative 9 though, so unless they block the tip, he doesn't really move forward. So if they block just like the tip there... You could just backdash and just see if they swing with something short range. You could blow it up, right? See, oh, well, he's kind of... Could he, you could get this to be out of jab range. Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe he has to stay close enough that you can't really do it. I mean, there's no harm in trying to backdash, though. There's literally no harm. If you could get away with a backdash, but in the case of Dragonov, his stuff all kind of reaches. This is like depending on the matchup kind of thing, but there's no reason not to try. If I get people to block the tip like that, I will try to backdash. That's going to be the first thing I'm thinking about, backdash. And if they whiff, get your down forward two ready. There's not much else to say about that move. Wall splats, nice little chunk of damage, and it's fast. That's about it. And it's homing. Uh, and it's safe. Uh, death March into Eagrab. The Treatments. Dubbed by Aris. The Treatment. 
You want to talk about a fucking noob killer. Here it is. Once upon a time in Tekken 6, this was the ultimate noob killer. The fucking ultimate. Thanks for the follow. So, as you can see, this whole string is plus one on block. In Tekken Tag 2, this was plus four on block. In Tekken 6, this was plus five on block. Why is that important? Well, if he counter hits me, it all combos. It all combos, and now he's plus five. If this were Tekken Tag 2 or Tekken, seven, uh, Tekken 6, this whole thing combos, he's plus eight. Counter hit combo plus eight on hit. <laughs> uh, it still does a shitload of damage, it looks like, right? Yeah, it still does a shitload. 50 damage is a lot of damage. But it always did a shitload of damage. It's, in Tekken 6, when, when Dragunov had Rage, three of these back-to-back, -back, you're dead. As a matter of fact, you're, you're dead when the third one connects and he doesn't even need to finish it. You're dead. It was like fucking crazy-ass damage. And in, ta in Tag 2, same thing. So basically, any noob... In Tag 2, you could just kind of do this. So, uh, you could still do it in Tag 2 over and over again, but jabs would interrupt you. In Tekken 6, if they did anything slower than a jab, it was going to counter hit, and he could do it again. It looped into itself on counter hit as a frame trap in both Tekken 6 and Tag 2. But the thing about Tekken 6 is jabs would only exchange. They would not be able to interrupt it. So they wouldn't know what the fuck to do. And then, of course, it still, even in Tag 2, sets up down back 1-4 as a counter hit string. And this was crazy. Down back front four, as I talked about last time, was crazier in Tekken 6 because he got a guaranteed death uh, march of tyranny down 3 4 when uh, down forward 1 4 landed on counter hit. <laughs> so in Tekken 6, this shit was so fucked up. Let me tell you guys a quick little story. During Tekken 6 days, I only went to two local tournaments. One of them had a really laggy setup. I, uh, I, uh, Got to play against this guy that ended up being a really good uh, local Oscar player, apparently. A dude named Elite. And I was like, this guy's fucking Oscar. I don't know about this guy, so I'm not going to respect him. And it was a laggy setup. So the match consisted of a whole lot of this. <laughs> I was just varying my timing constantly. <laughs> I fucked him up. And after the match, I like stick up my hand, my hand for him to shake it. And he kind of gave me this. Yeah, yeah, whatever, whatever. He shook my hand, but he was so fucking butter. And it felt so good, dude. It felt amazing that he didn't know what to do about this shit. And I did not give a fuck what he thought. You just a spammer. I don't give a fuck. Learn what to do. This is offline, motherfucker. Anyway, he turned it out. He, he turned out to be actual, actually, a really solid player, from my understanding. I never really interacted with him outside of that, but because uh, I didn't, I stopped going to local shit because I didn't like Tekken Six and I liked Tag Two even less. But he ended up becoming a good player overall. Um, and yeah, this shit was fucked up. This shit was fucked up. <laughs> I'm a grimy motherfucker. It, that was so... It, it made me feel so good. I remember it to this day. Near in my heart. You gotta know what to do. Uh, in case you don't know what to do, well, even then, it's not as effective as it used to be. There's an infamous video of Aris fighting against this Huarang player. <laughs> and it goes to the third round... Oh, sorry, the fifth round, final round in Tag 2 when you're playing online. And then he just decides, I'm just going to start doing this. And he starts talking shit about the one-on player. He's like, you thought you were so good doing all these strings, doing all these things. You thought you were the shit, right? He's just slowly talking shit to the guy while just abusing the string on him. You know, by the way, you can just do the first, uh, first two hits. And this is still good to do because you see JDCR do this shit. You see him do this. You see him do this. And then sometimes you see him finish it. So, this is still good. It was just way better before. It was, like, such a noob killer. Um, it was one of the old Aris Rage videos where he fucks up that hot on player. It was really good. I recommend looking it up. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, this shit is still really good. Honestly. It's still really good. 50 fucking damage on a string that's plus one on block, right? But they have to duck the high. That is how you stop this, right? There's another thing about this string, though. 
<clears throat> I talked earlier about back four three and how you could duck that high. Well, if you duck that, the second hit makes the third hit combo on normal hit, and it's a mid. So now you're at negative five, and he gets 32 damage. But the thing about that is that that two option actually has a pretty shitty hitbox. So there are times where it whiffs, even though it clearly hits people. So it's a little weird. It was especially weird in tag two, but in general, mechanically, that is the way it is. So that's another reason. If you're wondering why at a high level you don't see this get ducked much, that that's that's the reason. As long as you mix these strings up really well, you know, you could get away with a lot. Mixing up all these strings. No count hit properties on the last hit by itself. Uh, take it easy, dude. So they want to spam. Uh, just gonna. Oh, I thought you were saying adios as in you were leaving. As the main, man, the main. You quoting the main man? Beat them with intelligence. So if they want to spam a negative thirteen string. Adios, amigo. I'm just gonna repeat the. It's the thirteen frame punish. Uh, I'm not a main man hater like a, like a lot of other people are. I think he gets really whiny and shit, and I don't really watch his stuff because of it. But he's put out some good content, so I'm not really a main man hater. I do hate, though, how some people idolize him. It's like, make sure people earn that kind of admiration. Don't give it to them if they didn't earn it. All right. So this is still a very good string. The Treatments. Although, I very much enjoy that it's called Death March into Ear Grab, which implies that that slap that he's doing in the end, he's slapping you in the ear. Uh, a shitload of damage. I mean, I already went over this. Uh, he could also do the tackle. So let's go over the specifics of this stuff. So this tackle, Dragonov has a unique tackle. So you can break it, and... I forgot how to do this. There's a way to reversal it. I used to know how to do this shit. I can't remember. This, I don't know if you can still do the reversal on this tackle and put him on his back instead. I think it's you have to press it late. Well, when I see JDCR use this in tournament, when people break it, they just break it in that way. Another cool thing about this is look at all this space you created when you break the tackle. This actually gives you good spacing. And I, I suspect that JDCR uses it sometimes for that reason. Think about it, right? If his back is to the wall, maybe not pressed up against the wall, but near the wall. All of a sudden, you get them to break this one time. And uh, ugh, I can't even fucking break it all of a sudden. Wow. And all of a sudden, the wall's to your side, basically. So it's it's a solid repositioning tool. So Dragonov has unique options off of that. I'll go to them later, but as you can see, it's not a normal tackle. And these are the things you can do off of that throw. Do all that shit. Yeah, I'm ducking. Oh man, I don't know how I did it. Is it because I held down back? It's either a time you gotta hold down back. I always forget. Ah, I just did it again. So maybe it is by holding down back. Asura Senki. There are times where you should spam moves and there are times where you shouldn't. There's nothing wrong with spam, necessarily, right? What is your goal? When you play online, when you're playing online or playing against a friend or whatever, you're playing to get better, right? You should always be playing to get better, even if you're playing ranked, because ranking up is a side effect of you being good and getting better. You shouldn't play to rank up necessarily. You should play to get better and everything else will just come naturally. So, 
if playing your best means I'm going to spam this to the win, sure, but you got to be cognizant at the same time that, hey, what if I run into somebody that knows how to deal with that situation I just put this person in? Do I have anything else in my back pocket? Do I have, like, solid basics? Do I know how to deal with pressure? Do I know all this other stuff? The answer is no. That's when you need to reevaluate what you're doing. You get what I'm saying? You'll improve much quicker with that mindset, at least. At least I'm of the belief that you will. Now, that doesn't mean don't spam. Especially if you're playing Dragunov, you're going to be doing a lot of this, right? There's, that move is going to be coming out a lot. And so is this. As long as you're game planning uh, properly around those moves, <clears throat> by all means, spam them. You're Dragunov. That's your job. <laughs> Just spam those moves. Play your character, if you will, you know. <clears throat> so, yeah, death marches to ear grab. You can reversal the fucking tackle, but I forget the specific rules. Now, I know there's a lot of videos online where people explain the specifics of reversing those tackles. So, I'm going to just recommend looking them up because I don't remember right now. I have to look it up and bring it up next time, maybe, or something. Um, but, yeah, mix, the, mix all three of these up well. Back 4 to 1. Back 4 to 1 plus 2 for the takedown. Back 4 2 by itself. And back four three, uh, back four two is negative seven. So you can't sidestep because sort of because of the hesitation caused by the last hit. So you could sidestep, but if you do want to choose to sidestep after this, I recommend sidestep. It's a block. Don't commit to a sidewalk. Like don't fully commit. And also, if you do them back to back, back four two, back four two, understand that you are negative seven, so you are most definitely opening yourself up to eating counter hit, like slow counter hit moves, not just fast ones. And we already verified before, back four tracks the dragon off's right for whatever reason it does. Next, Blizzard Hammer. This is a good move. It's always been a good move. Gives a stomp on a normal hit for 45 damage. It's a lot of damage. It got buffed in this game. Um, back one plus two is plus six now. I, I forget how much this used to be, plus three or four. But it forces crouch. It always did at plus six. Ah, if you sidestep the left, you got to block. All right. Uh, the startup is slow, so this is just a good um, uh, move to use in Oki. If you get people afraid of dragging off Zoki, which is going to be a lot of while running two or dash up into down two, that also opens up dash up to their face into back one plus two. And especially after his wall combo, it's a popular follow-up because it interrupts, like, wake up into attacks. Interrupts most wake up kicks. It'll interrupt people waking up into armor, if you time it right. It'll interrupt people waking up into rage arts, if you time it right, once again, because those both have eight frames of startup outside of, like, one, instances, uh, one instance of Kazumi's armor, I believe. It's a little bit faster. But she has to input forward forward for her, so it's not going to happen on a wake-up situation. So this is a fucking cheat move. Plus six force crowd sets this up. It sets this up. It sets all of his counter hit tools up. All of them. All of them. Really, really amazing move. This is one of those moves that when you block it, you have to fucking just stay still. You gotta stay still. And remember what I told you about force cross situations. If you're on the two piece side and you do this, they're not gonna be able to sidestep your best moves. So, for example, back four two one is already a frame travel. Guess what? It doubles uh, in catching people that sidestep to his right. So, back four it does at least. So, consider that. But even then, plus six is enough where um, they probably will have trouble sidestepping a couple of things that they usually would be able to sidestep. Let me show you guys that right now. Stand guard, sidestep. One piece side, right? So he sidesteps that there. What about? Well, okay, he does that there. Okay. Okay. Or 
got that too. What about uh? Okay. Okay, so not so much here. He would need plus eight, really, or plus seven. So, for example, see, see. So he's about if he ha if that were plus seven, I think I think that's the sweet spot. Then all of his shit was all of us started start all of a sudden start hitting him. What's plus seven? Plus eight. Plus seven. Oh, maybe plus eight is a sweet spot. Oh, not for Dot Ford One though. Yeah, so plus eight is the sweet spot. Alright, good to know. General rule of thumb. As long as you're right in their face. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, that's a cheap fucking move. It also breaks the floor. So if you do like... Uh, I don't know why you would do this, but that's an option. Maybe after a wall splat, you'll want to do that, like that right away to break the floor and then continue your wall combo. MBC? Who the hell is NBC? Uh, Gigas and Hayashi are like that. Yeah, some characters have their side switching throw. Still switch sides when it's broken. Like Dragon Off Suthro. Dragon Off Suthro does that. So yeah, that's a good move. Inertia Kick is next. Back plus 3 plus 4. This move is a Sabaki parry. Uh, have you seen Aris play, play against Steve? MYK Steve or... I get Steve online. You'll see him use this move a lot because it's a punch parry. The window, I'm not sure. It has a weird window. Um, okay. So, as you can see, and then you get a free down 4 1 3. I don't think he gets anything off of a down 2. But that's not even like it with this move. I'll show you some more in a second, but let me see. So, yeah, he's off axis, so you can't really. Maybe even big characters, but he can't do anything after a down two there. So it's down four, one, three. Oh, don't be too slow, though. There you go. Or if you want to break the floor, and the floor breaks, then it's down three, four. Oh. Wait, is that too slow? There it is. As long as you're not too, as long as you're not too slow, you can break the floor. But that's not it with this move. We're going to stage select. I want you to pay attention to this knockdown. I talked about this with several characters. Whenever you see these weird knockdowns that flip the opponent sideways like that, you could do weird shit at the wall. Look at the knockdown. You see how it spins him sideways to my left? Same thing with up forward four, by the way. To my right. But we're talking about back plus three plus four right now. Let's make him face me. Face me, asshole. <clears throat> so, now the wall is blocking my left side. So if he flips into the wall, he will be on axis in front of me. Is it down two? Nope. So you have to instant while standing four, and you will get a juggle. So you might have seen Ares do that before, but that is the case with this move. King main Korean. And by the way, that is also the case with up forward four. In case you're wondering. So you don't want to you want to you want to do a dash up it's a forward three and the cool thing about this is since it's a, an exclusive to a wall stage chances are your combo after afterwards will get you wall carry into a wall combo it's pretty fucked up right it's doubly fucked up when you consider that in the case of um up forward four up forward four it Usually, for the most part, is a reliable tracker to Dragunov's left. So if you're thinking, I got to size him away from the wall, 
Well, the move that covers that side gives him a juggle and is safe on block. So, that's just another little bonus. There's a lot of moves that do this. Uh, Paul's back one, two. Uh, King's down forward two, one on counter, of course, the combos. Uh, and other shit that I don't fucking remember right now. A lot of moves do this. Asuka has one. How hard is Heihachi to use compared to other characters? He's very hard. He's very hard to use. Because, for example, Heihachi, uh, he doesn't have a wild standing launcher other than delayed hop kick. So if you want to block punish certain things, certain lows that are like, let's say, negative 16, 17 or some shit like that. Let's say negative 17, 18. You have to cancel out of your crouch with a dash and electric them. Dash electric from crouching. That is not an easy thing to do. And that's, that's key, because then, otherwise, you only get, like, what is it, 41 damage doing while standing one into Death Fist. Also, even from standing, uh, Heihachi doesn't have a launcher other than Electric, I think. Right, what does he have? Uh, forward, forward, two is too slow to punish with. Uh, you delayed hop kick. I'm having trouble finding any normal hit launcher that he has. Let's not forget, forward, forward, three, once again, is too slow. Uh, yeah. I can't think of anything. Hey, Hashi doesn't have delayed hot kick. Are you sure about that? Yes, up 4 3 4. Once again, that's too slow. Up 4 3 4 is very slow. I'm, you sure he doesn't have delayed hot kick? You sure about that? Are you sure? Are you sure? There's very few characters in the game that do not have a delayed hop kick. Oh, he got that fucking weird shit. He does have this, though. <laughs> so to give you an example of what I was talking about earlier. If I wanted to launch that. gotta do that and it's not easy that wasn't even a punish so let me make him block it's not easy to fucking do And it's not even easy to do when you have something really bad on block. It's still not that easy to do. It's a whatever. I also don't think Heihachi is all that good in general. I mean, he's good. He's clearly, he has good shit, but it's like... He's so much, like, I put him personally a lot lower than the other Mishimas. And under Jin, regular Jin. Oh, there's no game audio? Why is that? Did the audio get cut off? Oh, there's been no audio the whole time, you motherfuckers. Nobody told me anything, and I'm like an hour and a half in. Come on, people. I was talking about the music before and shit, and pointing to my earphones, and nobody says anything? Where the fuck is this? You guys are letting me down. No, I know about Heihachi. I know he has good stuff. He's not exactly new. I ain't gonna change my mind. He's way below the other machine.
I mean, you know, if you like him, use him. I don't think he's a bad character. I just think, what does Heihachi have that makes him, like, stand out compared to, like, the other Mishimas? Down back two, what he fucking do? He has the worst health sweep by a mile. He has uh, shitty low pokes in general. Uh, and then he has shitty block punishment. <laughs> so it's like... Unless you're perfect uh, with your electric execution, his block punishment is fucking whatever. And no, you don't need a stagger load to block punish with uh, electric. You don't. You need to be fucking good. So yeah, I was talking about inertia kick, so I already showed you guys that uh, it tracks. Not, I'm sorry, not, it uh, it gives him a wall combo. Sorry. It gives him wall carry when the wall's to his left. I'm sure it tracks too, actually. It's slow as hell, though. So I want to use it as a tracking tool. Oh, it is a high. Also, be careful with that. Oh, wow, it looks like it should track to his right. I didn't realize it was that linear. It's super linear, fuck. Um, it is safe on block. It's only negative two on block, that's pretty good. No wonder why Aris abuses this shit. Negative two on block? The cool thing about this being negative two on block, see, I never knew this, I never really used this fucking move, to be honest with you. The cool thing about this being negative two on block is it puts the opponent in a situation where if you were to swing after this with like a jab, for example, if they wanna beat you out without movement, you know, with a button, counter hits you, Chances are it's gonna be a punch, a fast punch, other than a magic four, which this back to back will blow up. So that's pretty fucking good. How you know about that? That's not new video games. Kazuya used to have that. I don't know if he still has it. All the Mishimas had that with forward four. Uh, both Kazuya and Heihachi. That's not a big deal either. Is that Yakuza Zero? Yes, it is. His full cost down forward four is all right, but so what? <laughs> so what? He doesn't get like, does he even get anything guaranteed after? I don't think he does unless he's near the wall. You're, you're, you're bringing up these things, it's like, yeah, they're all right, but you're talking about a Mishima. None of that shit matters. Because if you're going to play him, you have uh, other characters that have those tools and are way better than him. So you, if you want to play that character, you have to be a loyalist. Like Lee, but he's not as shitty as Lee. He's not like shitty like in that way. He's a good character. Man. Sub Zero is just an unblockable. So nothing about it there. You know how unblockables work. Counter Strike. All right, this is a weird, goofy move. So on counter hit, this starts juggles. As you can see. So he does have a counter hit juggle starting tool like up front with the first hit. So if this were to exchange, but it's slow, it's 20. He does auto sidestep left, and that's important because you could sidestep into this uh, sidestep left into this one, it gives you a double sidestep, but that's not the only reason why this is important. On normal hit, you see how this is plus nine. That means if, if you were to land this on the side or the back of the opponent, unless they are Ling Zhaoyu, Master Raven, and I don't know if Lily has a back turn counter. Anybody that has a back turn counter. Uh, uh, or some sort of unique back turn option to stop this from happening. He gets a free down forward too. If he lands this on your side or on your back. Guaranteed down forward too. I can't guard on my side. So I'm gonna let it hit me. And I'm gonna hold back. Oh. No way to do it. This is 
is a classic Aris move, by the way. Oh my god, up back to, not back to, please. There you go, see? That's what happens if he connects to your side. You turn around, but you turn around, and if he hits you on the right side, you turn and your left side is facing him. And then he just come forward to you. If he hits you in the back, you just can't turn around in time. So this is basically, in, against most of the cast, this is guaranteed. Oh god, now it's too loud. Jesus Christ. How about now? I'm having a lot of trouble fucking... Alright, let's do this. Alright. It's fucking OBS shit lies to me all the time. To recap what I'm saying here is if he hits you in the in the side with this move, uh, he hits me on the right side. If I hold back to turn around, my left side is facing him and I still cannot block. See? That's why I let I, I get hit and I'm facing at an odd angle. I'm I'm launched at a lot angle at an odd angle. So if you're dragging up and you land this, you gotta do just like the right jab into back four three as you juggle. And uh of course on the back, uh similar situation, but remember that certain characters have back turn counters that activate on frame one, like Ling Zhao Yu and Master Raven. And maybe somebody else that I don't remember right now. So in those situations, this is not guaranteed. You just get a really strong mix-up. But that's really, like, that's the real juice with this move. That's the good shit. Uh, I think I've heard about Aris in older games talk about using this on Oki. When people tech, you go in the opposite direction, and then you sidestep and bam, you hit him upside the head. You can do some really nasty stuff if you use this move well. And it just happens to also be a regular... On counter hit, you see just a regular juggle starter on counter. Hit. And on, on hit, it's plus nine in general, which is nice. It is high, but it's safe. Negative five with pushback. I didn't even realize it pushed back. Look at that shit. If you're right in their face and they block and you backdash, there's going to be a lot of whiffs happening. So if you get him to block it from maybe um, yeah, good example. If you get him to block like from a slightly spaced out, look at that. That wasn't a punish though. The general idea, there, that was. The general idea is you're not going to just automatically backdash and swing. You're going to backdash, wait for a whiff, and then swing. Good move. Very good move. Very, very, very good move. So that's Counter-Strike. Next, we got Eye Blasts. This move used to cause nosebleed stun on Counter-Hit. And if he didn't break the nose beast stuff, he got this into a full combo. So it was like a 50 or 45 or some shit. Really high damage launcher. <laughs> now, it just uh, gives him a knockout. Eye blast. So he's like fucking Roddy Piper in your ass with the eye pokes. As far as the juggle, while standing for It's the while standing four down two. And it's just another high. So I was wrong. I, I forgot about these moves. He does have like a fast instant counter hit tool for like juggles. Uh, this is probably his best one as, uh, for that specific purpose because it's 16 frames. It's pretty fucking fast. And it's only negative seven on block. It is a high. It also pushes back. So once again, you got the situation where if you space it, uh, you may not be able to backdash too much. But there are certain things you may be able to sidestep.
Oh, look at that. But man, yeah, I thought that tracked in that direction. Alright, not that. Not that move, though. Not that move. But back four all of a sudden loses. Oh, what the fuck? God damn it, back four. You're lying to me, game. Is it because he's plus one? Oh, shit. Dude, we went over this last time. This was happening, right? Fuck. God damn it, Tekken. Oh, my God. Okay, so back four doesn't track, or this could just be a weird specific thing with Dragon Off. This game gets really weird with this stuff sometimes. What can I say? I'm not crazy, right? I went over this yet, uh, not yesterday, two days ago, and he was not doing a great job sidestepping that shit. But whatever. If you space that move out, it does push back a little, so you can make some things with, like, shitty range moves like Miguel's jab. You can make that shit whiff easily. Um, and it's a counter hit juggle started at 16 frames, so you could do that in, for example, here, that on block, it's up forward one. It's a good uh, choice. If you got somebody that mashes when they shouldn't be, I mean, it's the most obvious frame trap ever, but some people just don't get the message, right? See? Or while running two. Now jabs will beat this out, but anything slower. See? But jabs, of course, will beat it out. So anytime you're at plus, like, you know, five, maybe even plus four. This is not a bad option. Just know that it is a high. Speaking of Yakuza, what are your thoughts on the new one? I've been playing it video games. I have some issues with the new engine. It's kind of janky. And uh, I'm having trouble getting creative with the way I beat the fuck out of people in that game. Because they limit the heat actions in weird ways. You have to be in the stupid extreme heat mode and shit where you power it up and shit. And I kind of wish they didn't do that. It's weird. And they added some cool new heat actions that I could never get to trigger. For example, the beautiful girl one, where you kick a guy and then he lands face first into a girl's chest, and then she headbutts him and then knees him in the face. I have not been able to do that. I've been trying. Whatever. Anyway. Under pressure, this is Dragonov's orbital. Here's another instance. Remember how I said before how people keep calling this snake edge? And it's not a snake edge? People call this an orbital. It's not an orbital. And I like how Aris was like, calling out people calling these kinds of moves orbitals. They're not orbitals. It's not an orbital. What is an orbital? Orbitals are like Brian's and in sort of like L Lars and like shit like that. But Brian has the orbital of all orbitals. They're safe on block kicks that uh, have some sort of movement that makes them evade. Not just lows, but like you'll, at, at odd angles, L Lars was able to like jump over mid pokes and shit with his orbital um brian's uh also rec specifically recovers very fast on whiff that's i think exclusive to brian i think every other orbital in the game recovers awful on whiff also brian is able to jump straight up uh and still get an orbital that is the case for dragon though but uh dragon is also fucking slow as hell 30 30 frame startup see now that's a whiff you have to go into a jab To that because it doesn't uh, get him high enough for you to do a, uh, the back four three after the forward four four three uh this is i believe negative nine on block huh <laughs> i was wrong ne completely wrong negative five so you could sidestep after this just about everything outside of jabs 
<laughs> That's pretty fucked up. That looks like an elbow. So Dragonov's on block is more like Brian's. Negative five. I think that's an elbow, guys. I'm not able to counter it. Yeah. That's an elbow. Normal hit juggle starter. Definitely no tracking. That This doesn't surprise me. And since it has so much startup, it's like super linear. You're going to get his rear every time you sidestep. Of course, you can also hit him out of the air. Just pretty high. That kind of makes me wonder if there's a window here where he goes over mids. Well, this ain't no Josie uh, butterfly edge, but whatever. Yeah, look at that recovery. Would you ever use that move over up forward four? Probably not. Up forward four is 22 frames. That's reasonably fast. That's fast enough to almost use as a mix-up tool, but up forward four is like, um, is, um, a unique animation, so it's not really much of a mix-up tool. Also, up forward four has pretty good tracking. You can get around it, but... It's a little weird. Like, if you, uh, if you just step... Even if you go away from them, if you just step, it's not good enough. You have to, like, sidewalk. Right? Some characters just stepping will probably be able to get around it, but it's inconsistent. Most of the cast will probably have to sidewalk. And then if you go towards the right, you can't... Some characters, once again, are able to get around this move, even though it's supposed to track to that side. But it's also inconsistent. Right? Like, I'm able to sidewalk. See? I sidewalked it one time. It seems to be a spacing thing in general. Like, if you're not right up against his, his face... The tracking on that move is nowhere near as good. Right? So you combine, uh, uh, you combine those things and then you consider that this has like zero tracking, is way slower, and everybody could pretty much get to your rear. If you get too cute and you want to use this as your primary anti-low option, you're going to get fucked up real bad. <laughs> So yeah, save that for a good read on the low. I wouldn't use it as the default. Just in case you're going low, I'm going to do this like you can for Brian's orbital. Brian could just randomly throw out his orbital. Dragonov, I don't believe he could just randomly throw this out. Even if you go up. Video games, everybody would love that shit. I mentioned Killer Instincts uh, tutorial mode and practice mode last time. Oh, it's negative four. Oh, five? Hold up a second. Interesting. So what's going on here is if I neutral jump, if I press up with it, and I get his like leg to block it, miss his arm, I get the second frame uh, the second active frame to be blocked. With up with up to. And it's negative four instead. I mean I don't think that's a super big deal, but whatever. It's there. That, um, that also means the range is kind of shitty if it's sometimes with well, it's obviously shitty if it's uh, sometimes whiffing his arm up close like that. So anyway, Killer Instinct has not only does it show you the hit boxes of all the normals, it shows you the box area of the proximity guard. For those of you, for the, for those of you that don't know what proximity guard is in a 2D fighter, it's the thing that makes it so if you're within that range, if somebody presses something and you're holding back, you block. Animation wise, even if you're not up against the move, you're in a, you're stuck in the block animation. Killer Instinct shows you that shit. I don't know what, how many other fighting games, maybe Skullgirls or something. I don't know. All right, so yeah, up forward two is a pretty good move, a new move for Dragon All, but you, you don't see it too often for a reason. That doesn't mean it's useless. And then speaking of up forward four, here it is. I already talked about this move several times. I showed you guys before when the wall's to my right. 
uh, to Dragonov's right, he could pick up on the wall standing four into a juggle. Otherwise, you do down four, one, three. A four, four, down four, one, three. But that's not it. You can also do down four, four. For less damage for some reason, but it pushes away more maybe. Both of these options give you wall carry, like if they land up against the wall. Not too much wall carry, but if they wall splat, you could run up a wall combo in time. Uh, if you are on the floor break stage, March of Tyranny will break the floor and you continue the juggle. I think you can go right into back 4-3. If not, then go into back 3 and then dash up and continue your juggle. Uh, so yeah. This is like a fucking key dragon off move. Very, very, very good move. Very, very, very good move. I wish that shit worked. That's a reset though. You wanna get cute and reset people? <laughs> <clears throat> that used to be Dragonov's DR combo, I think, off of this. He used to do this, and then this, and then that. <laughs> I, if I recall right, that was his combo in second DR. The first game that he was in. He was not good in that game, though. So, yeah, Slicey Soap Bot, good move. Low crust, safe on block. We already saw the tracking earlier. Negative nine, though, unlike up forward two. It's negative nine. That's probably why I assume up forward two would be negative nine also. Next on the list, Scorpion Scissors. This is an un unbreakable grab that is slow as hell. This is just something you pull out every once in a while to end the to end uh, the round maybe, or you don't even need to end the round with it. So the thing is, uh, we've talked about, or I've talked about several times, Dragonov has this ability to make you freeze up, especially when you get up off the floor. He has really good tools to really kill you for getting up into moving or pressing buttons in general. So in any situation where the opponent gets up, you can just kind of dash up and go right into this shit. Right in their face and just do it. Just do it. That's kind of how you use this move. You just do it. Uh, as far as punishing it, it's a little difficult to punish. Very difficult even. Right, because if, if you were to duck this and you're trying to like while standing four, for example. See? And if you get up too early with a while standing for you get grabbed. So you, if there is even a sweet spot, it's not, nah, it's not giving it to me. Nope. See how cheap this shit is? Like it's not even risky uh, in the sense of if they were to duck it. It's risky if they mash. And that's kind of, oh, he ducks in the beginning too. Check that out. You see that shit? I didn't even realize he ducked in the beginning like that. Well, it's for jabs, I guess. Yeah, it's for jabs, really. But you see that shit? So the real risk is if your opponent mashes. But like I already told you guys, Dragon Ball is really good at deterring people from mashing, especially when they get up off the floor. So this is a pretty good move to throw out every once in a while. Don't make it a habit, but it's a good move. Uh, I don't think it tracks at all. Yeah, see? Like, someone like King will be able to easily turn a whiff like that into a juggle, I think. If we just sidestep it to down forward 4 3, but it's kind of whatever. Oh, wow. It actually clipped me. Dragonov is, is good at everything. He sure is. Tekken sucks. <laughs> Tekken sucks is your name. All right, so Russian Sickle. This move is not as useful as it used to be. But it's there. Fold forward two. If you get this to come out by accident, <laughs> instead of a wire running two, it's unsafe. But on counter hit, you get a free shoulder or a stomp. That's guaranteed too. The shoulder is more damage though. I think, right? Yeah, it's a little more damage. Three more damage. Um, there's not much to say about about this move now that uh, there's no bound. That's really what this move was for before. You could break the floor with it now though. Oops. 
It used to be a really annoying. He used to have to do this. And that forward forward suit would be really easy to fuck up. It was annoying. Sometimes it would just whiff and then all line would make it that much worse. Uh, but either way it goes, it does do the floor spike thing. So they have to hold back if they don't want to get hit with a guaranteed follow up. And does that, that sort of stuff. It does break the floor. Yeah, uh, but I, there's no, you know, it's just there. It's just like a leftover move that I don't really... I suppose you could use it as like a range with Punisher because it is 15 frames. So if you're in a situation where it's like, shit, I'm not really in range to get anything crazy, you could just forward forward to them while you're moving around. That's not the worst thing in the world to do, I guess. So it's not completely useless, I guess. But, uh, eh, it's there. It is a forward forward move, so it has that bootleg, like, realigning tracking. Actually, it's better to use the bot for this. The thing about, you see how he's able to get around this move? So the thing about these forward forward moves is you could delay the input a little bit. You can hold the second forward for a bit. Forward forward and do it like that and that'll add tracking. So for example, see? He's blocking though, so he's sidestepping into blocking, but point being if he were sidestepping the whole time, like for example this, right? If I do it instantly, he gets around it. But if I delay it a bit, all of a sudden it hits him. So that's the thing about forward forward moves in general, and even outside of forward forward moves, you could of course dash to realign any linear move. See? Versus that's a second rule in general. Same thing here. So uh, uh, you don't even need to dash. You can just kind of hold forward for a moment. Same thing about back. Back dash. Same thing about holding back. Same thing about sidestepping. Both directions. So, if you're wondering how to get around that when you're on defense, you cancel your sidestep and then you start it again. And if you want to see how that looks in action... Might be hard to do with this. There it is. Much easier when I get my hitbox. <laughs> Stair stepping, they call this. Yep. Of course, you could just sidestep late also. Later than you usually do. It's all about timing. <sighs> so yeah, forward forward two, good move. Well, not a good move, but it's there. <laughs> Next. Ah, of course, forward forward two, you can cancel. Video game, stair stepping has nothing to do with backdash canceling. It has nothing to do with backdash canceling. I just showed you what it's for. Stair stepping is for when people delay their moves and you need to like stop your movement, especially specifically a sidewalk, and then step again. Cause the beginning of your sidestep is the most evasive part of your sidestep. That's when you actually lean into the moves and like you make things that sort of track sometimes, you make them not track. Class, pay attention. Let me throw the chalk at you. So he also has to cancel just like one, three, two. You can go to one plus two. You could do, uh, you could break that with uh, one plus two. There is no like unique sort of mix up there. And then he could hold back and do nothing. Which used to be useful because you could kind of tell when you would whiff. You, you, I talked about down forward two into this and then this. 
you could kind of react when he got used to really playing dragon off for a while you could almost react to the forward forward two whiffing and then just cancel it and be like it's not gonna hit cancel it and then stand <laughs> which lets you recover in time so at least press your advantage for them falling down but that's about really all it's about there's no real use for it uh stinger kick this is a very high damage homing move that is plus on block this used to do like 45 damage in tag two Plus three on block. That's less than it used to be, but it pushes back like crazy. Against the wall, it does not push back. Man, it might move you back a little bit, but... Uh, this used to be, I think, plus four or five or some shit like that. It's only plus three now, which is totally fine. I mean, whatever. But, uh, and if it happens to hit them, it's a fucking buttload of damage. And then not only that, it's a uh, core screw move, right? So, it's got all that going for it. If you hit people out of the air. It's not much else to say about it. I mean... You could add some... It's it's the move that gets in the way of you trying to dash into a forward, uh, forward three, right? But you know the trick. I talked about it last time. You hold down either three or four, and you tap forward three times and press the other kick button while you're holding down the other one. So I'm holding four right now. Forward, 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 three while holding four, you get forward three. If I hold three right now, forward, 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 four, you'll get forward three. If I weren't doing that, you get that. <laughs> and that fucks every combo. At least, it, at least it connects. There's other things that fuck up your combo that get you launched. At the very least, if you fuck this up and get forward, forward, three, after a core screw, it's going to hit them, typically. So, you got that going for it. I always thought it was interesting that in fighting games, people use all characters regardless if they are good, like drag, or bad, like bears. Well, I mean, fighting games that are good, at least. Are, well, there are some good fighting games that are unbalanced. People typically will gravitate towards the characters that they want to play. There are some people that will tear whore. But I think even in the case of the people that tear whore, I think most of them, not all, but most, like the characters in the end. At least a little bit. Even if it's not their uh, number one character of choice, I think they like the character at least a little bit. I don't believe that about Bob players. They're scum of the earth. Second six Bob players are scum of the fucking earth. And they're all going to hell. And they all could go to, go to hell and eat some jello pudding and pound cake with Bill Cosby. As far as I'm concerned. So, <clears throat> Lars players too. If you're saying, uh, if you're wondering why Lily players go to hell, there she's not top tier. It's because she's Lily. They'll go to hell too. <clears throat> anyone run V Sync in this game? Does anyone ruin V Sync? Oh, um, my game looks like shit because my computer runs games like shit right now. So it's running like shit for me right now. This is why I don't put when I play online lately. I've been doing PS4 because it runs like shit for me. I don't know why. The game is poorly optimized. I have a GTX 1070, and I have a Core i7 processor, which may not be the most cutting-edge new shit, but it should be able to run this game fine. Everything is on low. Um, my computer has issues. So anyway, that's forward, forward, three. Next, we got forward, forward, four. Rolling Thunder. Is that what that was called? Rolling Thunder, yes. This is a counter hits. Juggle starter. You pick up with a wild standing forward or whatever. <clears throat> You may be able to pick up with something that does more damage, but my recommendation is just to do while standing four. And it is plus, if you space it, is that what it is? Uh, how many active frames does this have? Uh, three active frames, negative one up close. Plus one. You can get this as good as plus one. As bad as negative one. I think this used to be better on block. Another bonus for this is... Um, it hits grounded, but it is pretty linear. Ugh. Like if they were like to side roll or get up at all, this shit just whiffs all day. So you kind of have to like be careful because it recovers pretty damn slow. And depending on the timing of them getting up versus the timing of you doing this move, it could get you launched because there's a, it's a pretty big whiff. I mean, it goes without saying. It's clear. You can see that. And on normal hit, it's plus three. In DR, this used to be a high crush and a low crush. Kind of like uh, Yoshimitsu's knee of forward three. Where he ducks and then does the jumping knee. Uh, this ducks and then the roll will go over, would go over some lows. That's not the case anymore, so it does seem like if you space it from, like, back here, 
you'll go under some uh, highs. That was happening to me last time I was playing Miguel. That could totally be because Miguel's jab reach fucking sucks. But uh, it does seem to still kind of reliably go under highs if you space it. Uh, yeah, it's not a bad, it's a like, decent move to approach with, but it's not, you know. It's one of those moves that a lot of other characters that are really bad will be able to use this move, but Dragunov just has it anyway, even though he has way better options. It's like, why am I gonna approach with that when I can approach with this? I don't need that. I'm dragging off. I have wall running too, but uh, you also got forward, forward, forward. It's not a bad move. <laughs> it's also a counter hit launcher. Crazy, right? Common theme with this character. And it, he was always like this. He always had this stuff going on. It's not like this is new. It's just the way the game changed around him. And along with a couple of small buffs made him better. I gotta take a leak real quick, guys. That move used to be cheap in the air. Yep, I was talking about it. I'll be right back in a minute. I gotta take a quick leak here. Enjoy the music. Hold on a second. Boop. Alright, be right back. All right, I'm back. Uh, video game's probably already left. Uh, take it easy. All right, turn that off. Boom. Get my arcade stick up. So yeah. <sighs> All right, so uh, yeah, four, four, four. It's not a bad move, but it's like, why does Dragonov even have it anymore? Uh, let's see. Quarter circle forward one. Here we go. Now we start again to the roll dash stuff, right? Quarter circle forward one is a very good high juggle starter on normal hit. It is 15 frames. That does not make this a 15 frame Punisher. I mean, you could try, but it probably ain't gonna happen for you, right? I don't think he could even, I don't think it's even possible, to be honest with you. Because he has to do, he has to kind of like go into the crowd shot, at least a little bit, to get it to come out. So it's going to, it animates at 15 frames. It is impact I-15. Uh, but realistically, maybe it's like a 17 frame Punisher fastest, if you got it out of this fastest. Uh, it's really a tool you use in a neutral situation. It's a whiff punish from like this range right here. If people whiff punish you, you could just quickly do like a fireball, bam, like a Haruken. Punch them back, fist them right in the face. You do the juggle, blah, 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 blah. You get it, right? Uh, what's really good about this is, because it is a high, it is only negative three on block. It used to be negative one. Negative three on block, so you could just totally do this and sidestep into, like, a, a hit confirm back four three, for example. Or sidestep down four one, sidestep into nothing, back dash away. You know, you could down two after. You could even swing with a jab after it. That's totally a thing you could do. Most people tend to know that this is only like small negative frames on block and they don't swing. 
but it's worth knowing why. Now, if you're against Dragonov, you don't have to necessarily be afraid. It is negative three. So, for example, Dragonov versus Dragonov, maybe if he gets too cute moving around, back three that ass or something, right? Or just down forward one. Uh, really good move. Really, 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 really good move. Now, I don't know if this has any inherent tracking, but quarter circle forward, the same rule applies as like a crouch dash. It realigns. So if he were to slow it down, maybe not actually. Hold on. Maybe it does. If I hold down forward. Yeah. Okay. See, if I slow down the input, it tracks. So it does apply to this. So keep that in mind too. But it is a high, it is a high, it is a high. Next on the list. It, oh, that's not Crooked Hammer, that's Cocked Hammer. Okay, Cocked Hammer. Stinger Elbow. As the move describes, it is an elbow. This is your like big boy uh, whiff punisher from, from distance. From like back here, big whiff, bam. Look for this shit. This does a shitload of damage. There's a lot of juggles. You can go right in. This is, I think, the only launcher, other than delayed hop kick, you can go right into forward 2-4 and convert off of it. So, then you do that into whatever, right? You can do that into forward 1 plus 2. Or they made, uh, they made forward 2-3 into forward 3. Uh, sorry, forward 2-4 to forward 3 a lot easier in this game. Used to be really hard to do this. Now it's piss easy. Everybody can do this shit easily. So now he has that too. So basically, a lot of damage. Negative 13 on block. Same rules as Corps Circle 4 and 1. No inherent tracking, but you could delay the input. Not that you should be using it as a tracker, but you know. Ooh. Seems like it has some tracking to his right, actually. Yeah, okay. It does have some inherent tracking. To his right side. So step away from the move. Right, negative 13 on block. A little bit of pushback, but I don't think there's ever any range that he's going to make this safe, really. Unless you have some really unfortunate block punches. Yeah, that's that move. Next. Slay Ride. <laughs> this move got buffed. This is one of the reasons, one of the many reasons he's so good at this game. Like, Dragonov got some small key buffs on top of the game around him changing to really benefit him. And that's why he's pretty much considered, like, best, like, first or second best character in the game right now. This move used to be, like, negative seven or some shit crazy on hit in uh, Tag 2. And it was, like, negative 20-something. It was, like, launch punishable. Now, it's negative 14 on block. And negative. Wait, is this right? Okay. Negative five on here? Am I crazy or did they not? Hold on a second, I lost the window here. I'm looking at the RB Norway shit. I thought this was negative one. I think that's wrong, negative five. Oh no, it's negative five. It was negative one and they nerfed it to negative five? Yeah, so in the early version of FR, this was negative one, but now it's negative five. I didn't know that. Uh, wait, is that right? Hold up a second. I guess it, so I guess it is negative five uh, but yeah this move got nerfed but it's still really good because it's like an approaching low move that you could still pretty much sidestep after except for jabs and on counter hit it does good damage on normal but on counter hit if you connect the tip range on counter hit as you just saw <clears throat> it knocks you down and you get to juggle up close he gets a counter hit, hit throw there and the Oki looks good. <coughs> Not that good. Okay, so 
maybe you don't have the advantage. So he's not close enough to really hit with a quick low. Changes with the forward three. Um, oddly enough, even though it's a slide, it only has two active frames, really? It looks like it should have more, right? But yeah, it only has two active frames, so there's that. The Oki is not great after it, but it does a nice chunk of damage. Uh, the normal hit from far away... It's also negative five, it says. Yeah, okay. The far away thing only matters, uh, negative four to negative five. The only thing that matters is on counter hit for far away. Next on the list, Snap Me. Uh, by the way, the same rule applies, of course, to go forward one with this. It's not really a, a move you'll be doing up close. It's a move you'll be doing from like two back dashes away. Sometimes even further. So next on the list is the snap me, which is course looking forward four, and this is the shit that gets in the way when you try to while standing one out of counter hit while running two, right? You try to do that. What gets in the way is that. Because it's quarter circle forward while this is uh, down, down forward. Four. Unless you let go of the forward for uh, a few frames and then input four. But anyway, this is a hit throw on normal hit. And it has a follow up that you can execute two different ways. And the way that you execute it will determine how the opponent can break the follow up. It's either a one break or a two break. And think about it like a U shape. If you start from one, you input one, three, four, two. Or you could start from two and input two, four, three, one. The last button that you press determines the way the opponent has to break it. And it's the same hit throw. 55 damage. It's the other way. See? Same hit throw. 55 damage. Okay, looks good, man. Not really. Yeah, too far. <clears throat> On block, it's negative 10. I think it used to be worse. So it is unsafe, but it's not, not the worst. Um, I do think that sometimes uh, Dragon Ball players use this to end a juggle. I think I've seen Nobi do it. And I'm pretty sure it was on purpose. So maybe that's some sort of unique Oki off of this. I don't know what though. Ugh. Yeah, I don't know why. But I've definitely seen Dragon Ball players use that shit. I, I, I want to be able to tell you guys why. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, it's there. <laughs> The first one, the first hit by itself, looks like it should give good Oki, right? Nope, pretty much the same thing. Yeah, no. Nope, not guaranteed. Nothing reaches. Not in time, at least. All right, so next is shoulder. You can see, you can input it either way, and the last button that you input is what determines how uh, how the opponent has to break it. So next, we got Backswing Blow, one of the key Dragon Ball moves that, like, key in that it's very effective, like, as a comeback tool, 
but not key as in you should use it often. <laughs> uh, this, I believe, is negative 14 or 15. Let's see. Yeah, negative 15. So this is like, this used to be uh, not this bad on block. Uh, in case we ever play, I always use one, three, four. <laughs> yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for the heads up. I'll be sure it's a break too. <laughs> uh, it's not bad actually. Though. Like, I didn't know it was only negative ten for negative fifty-five damage for negative ten on the mid knee. If I were fighting, let's say an Oscar that was like trying to be cute, considering that this isn't super slow, like let's say this is or this. I mean, it's only one frame slower than that, but it's not that bad on block, and Asuka's 10-frame Punisher is shit. It's jab into a mix-up. I would totally use this against Asuka, to be real with you guys, right? And I don't know what happens if he hits you out of the air, if he could convert. Ugh, I gotta make him jump straight up. I wanna see what happens if you hit him out of the air. Of course you can get that. Oh, you see that? Oh, boy. Let's see if I can time a little later. Ah, it's late though. Ah. So back one two for consistency. Even if you connect the late. If you happen to hit an opponent out of the air like Asuka. So this would be like a pretty good anti Asuka tool if they if if they counter a lot. This doesn't mean anytime you fight an Asuka, just start doing random course to go forward four. Get the read. The really good Asuka players don't even counter that much. They very rarely do it. So, get the read first. So anyway, back to this. Uh, this is an elbow, but it has trash range. They, they, they pretty much have to be standing still or coming right into the like, dragon off to get hit by that. Like if I'm standing still, it actually, yeah, so. But if I, if I hold back, look at that, just walk back. No tracking. So they have to be committing to a button, you know what I'm saying? And of course, if you just delay your move a bit, that works too. I almost want to say you could react to him doing this and hit him. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe don't do that. <laughs> Ooh, wow. He beats a down back four, huh? If someone uh, that likes to start with buttons, it's a good uh, match starter. Well, of course, looking forward four. Oh, you mean back swing blow? Yeah, the classic. From like this range. Uh, this is basically the ma uh, round start range. So if somebody swings with anything from this range, back swing blow is going to blow it up. It's a risky one, though. Because all I have to do is, like, backdash. Oh, he did that. And then, you know, I get the launch instead. And then I still get the launch if I block it, too. Uh, so, yeah, it's just really one of those. You got to have a read and you got to, like, you got to be like, is this guy going to swing here? Um, what's a good situation to use it? I'm, I'm trying to think about a... Negative nine, right? See? Negative nine is no good. Oh. Okay, so it's a little good. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, now there we get caught. So, it covers you for, like, slower moves, but not jabs. At negative nine, it covers you for slower moves than jabs. So, it's still pretty good. Cheap ass shit. And the juggle's the same as like down forward two. It's just four, 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 three into the usual shit. Or jab or whatever the fuck, right? Hmm. 
Next, while running too. I mean, I've kind of already talked about this move several times. This is like, if there's a character, if there's ever a character where you need to learn while instant while running, other than King, it's Dragon Ball. Right? And even King is not as important as it used to be. King used to have to do that shit in BR for his juggles. He doesn't have to do that shit anymore. Wow, also, and I can't do it, huh? Jesus. Wow. I used to show off and do this shit all the time. Now I can't do it? Man. All right. So anyway, you need to be able to threaten with this in multiple ranges. Otherwise, it's going to be too obvious. Oh, my God. It's not even a hard range, and I'm fucking it up. So I talked about this yesterday. Forward 2-4. Forward 2 is probably going to be what comes out if you fuck this up. So always input this as while running 2-4. If, especially if you're going up close. That way, if forward two comes out by accident, you'll do the four to keep, kind of keep you covered if they happen to have ducked. And why would they duck if you dash in? Because you might dash into a down two. So it'll keep you covered, especially since the, the knee in forward two four is safe and starts juggles on counter. Here. So, yeah, this move, I mean, you know, this move is fucking everything. This is like one of the best moves in the game for a reason. What else can you say? It's 15 frank startup. Which is really why it's so goddamn hard to sidestep, but you can sidestep it. You should probably go left, I believe. Well, right, I mean, not left. That's too early. So if you're too obvious with it, you will get launched if you whiff this. Uh, same thing about it being on, on Oki. Uh, good thing is if they if you try to do it over somebody during Oki, if they try to wake up kick, it used to be good for back row catches because back row catches it would bound and in tag two you could turn that into a, a full juggle, which I don't think he was able to do in second six. It did a bound and he recovered too slow, but in tag two you were able to pick up with a down back two jab and whatever, uh, or tag assault. Uh, but yeah, it would do, it would bound people that held back. Now there's no like you know back roll to bound people during, but uh, you know it'll hit people trying to get up into something, you know. And if they stay down, he runs over their body and ends up on the other side away from them. And depending on how the spacing works, you got to be careful because he could just kind of stand there. And if you do a wake up kick, it'll whiff, and then he'll do a back turn hot kick to punish you. So basically, yeah, you got to be careful against dragging off. When he does this on Oki, you know. Also, Ash Dragon, we gotta be careful because sometimes you want to do this earlier to catch people pressing buttons. Like you will do it like from that range instead of getting up in their face and doing it. You want to do it early to catch people that press buttons and shit like that. And uh, that means they could backdash and make it whiff right in front of them, and that that sucks. Because he keeps moving forward. And I get whatever the fuck I want to punish him. And he recovers very slow. Anytime you make while running to whiff, he recovers very slow. As long as the spacing is in your favor to punish him, you can totally do it. And that's like the key to like fighting against this move. You need to make him hurt. Every time it doesn't go his way, you gotta try to make him hurt. You gotta try to make him hurt. Well, doing a proper juggle. Uh, should I use combos? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Should I use combos that does more damage but might miss on weird angles or consistent one? Consistent one. And it's uh, good that you brought that up, Asura Senki, because <clears throat> a lot of you new Dragon Ball players, whether you're new to Tekken or not, are doing this. Do not. Do not. Do not. Do not do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do this. The moment you land a while running two off axis, what's going to happen is you're going to connect the down two, the while standing four you'll connect, and then this is going to miss. It's going to happen. Trust me. Hell, maybe even the while standing four will miss after the down two. Now, while standing four is not completely foolproof, depending on the angle, but it's more consistent. And you don't sacrifice much damage in doing it. 
Now, how do you do this? Well, <clears throat> you could input quarter circle forward four. The perfect way, quote unquote, is down, down forward to get the roll dash. Down, down forward without a quarter circle forward. And then inputting four. See, that's what happens if you, if you get a quarter circle forward. You get the knee. But if you input down, down forward. <clears throat> perfectly. Well, I'm kind of giving away the trick to doing it, but I'm trying to get a good recording of it. No. Yeah. You see? There. That's the uh, quote-unquote perfect way. You see how it says down, down, forward, and then there's a four afterwards spaced? Not down, down, forward, plus four. Down, down, forward, neutral four. Right? <clears throat> uh, you could also dash up and do it instead while standing four. Which is a hard way to do it. But some people do it that way. I don't. Which is why I'm going to fuck it up many times. And that you can also the down, down, forward. That's also how you do it instant while standing forward. If you press it right away. See? See? There it is. Finally. See, I dashed. Look at the last input after the two. Forward, forward, neutral, down, down, forward, neutral, four. Because down, down, forward is how you do instant while standing four without any delay with Dragonoff. Because he has the road dash. Anybody that has the road dash can pretty much do this. Not only that, um, Jin, Devil Jin, and Kazuya, and Heihachi during their wave dash. Maybe even Bob. I never tested it with Bob. Maybe any character with a wave dash could do instant while standing four, uh, four seamlessly out of their wave dash. It's just something that they could do. I don't know why. Like, the Hell Sweep doesn't really overlap with it. The Hell Sweep is strict. Unlike Core Circle Forward 4, which is very much not strict. You can input forward during any point of this Core Circle Forward animation, and it'll come out. And that's why it gets in the way of this round running, too. So now that I got that whole explanation out of the way, here's a trick that you can practice to make this easy and consistent. You could just input Core Circle Forward 4. Right? It's totally fine to do it. What you want to do is, though, after you input the core circle forward, whether you're trying to do avoid the forward or not, hold the stick down forward manually and then let go and input four. It's more natural for me off of a while running too, but. Just hold core circle forward, hold the stick down forward for a moment, and then let go and press four. It put this forward, course circle forward, like a, like it's a electric or a cross dash. It's just natural to me. For whatever reason, I guess inputting forward first helps me with the timing. But and then you know it feels natural to me. I don't know. Uh, how do you hit the forward three in that combo? Sometimes you're too far away during that combo with drag, and forward three is tied with another move. Uh, I talked about the trick for that earlier. If you hold one of the kick buttons. If you hold like either three or four, and then you press forward, forward, forward while holding it, and then during the third forward, input the other kick button, you'll get dashed into forward three. See, I'm holding four right now, and then forward, 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 three always gets uh, forward three. By the way, their original intention with forward, forward, three was to hit people that were sidestepping or sidewalking while running two. That doesn't matter anymore. Not as much as it used to. Uh, cause at the end of the day, you could always just run stop, run down two with tracks, run back four for a faster one. You can still do forward, forward, three. That's why it, they, they have that huge buffer window with forward, forward, three. It's like a bigger buffer window than other forward, forward moves. So you could fake a while running two. And if they sidestep, forward, forward, three. But the thing about forward, forward, three though is it's slow enough that sidestep into a guard easily stops it from like being an issue. Sure, it's plus three with pushback, but, you know, it's not really much of a threat against people that are good with their movement. And it's even worse against people that, like, oh, he's he's, he's mixing it up with that? Then I'll just sidestep and then duck and just fuck your shit up, right? It's even worse against people like that, so... Or they'll just duck without pressing any buttons. So if you end up doing while running two, you get it on normal hit, right? 
Um, <clears throat> Damn it. Wow, all of a sudden I can't do a shoulder. Jesus, there it is. Um, Wild Running 2 is one of those that you got to hold back. Otherwise, he gets a free shoulder or a stomp. So you got to hold back during it if it hits you on normal hit. So on normal hit, this isn't even a big deal. It's, 20, it's like Kazumi's Wild Running 2. It's 25 damage. So it's not the biggest deal in the world. So basically, if you finally get to Dragonov that's doing 4-4-3 four, four, as like a mix-up. Or even just dash up into down 2. In the case of 4-4-3 four, four, at least. Uh, you get way more reward for ducking that than he would for hitting you with a regular hit while running two. Right? Let's just like mid-max the situation. Let's double up. If you're Josie or K Kazuya, then ducking gives you the bonus of also launching down two. Right? If you're not either of them, then you could duck with down forward. That way you'll duck and you can launch that. Or you'll low parry this and get more damage than you would on block. For most, for, for, for pretty much the whole cast, I can't think of anybody other than the long 13 frame while standing launchers that will get less damage from low parry than they would, you know, just doing their 13 frame punish. I don't think there's anybody that you know, everybody gets like 40 plus or 45 or somewhere in the 40s off of a low parry. <clears throat> Gigas gets 52, I think, and maybe more. This is with all without walls, by the way. With walls, everybody gets more, obviously. <clears throat> So, if you just want to play the mid-maxing, as long as you're not swinging against while running to, you can just tap down forward and stand. Stand block right after, by the way. Don't fully come into a down forward, because then it's like all sorts of goofy shit that could happen. Uh, but you, as the Dragonaut player, could always just run stop, which, uh, which will catch people that challenge your while running it uh, moves with like a standing magic four or something like that. You can just run stop short. Or, like I said, you can swing it early and hit the move coming in but that then you risk like whiffing right in their face so it's still a read but you know it doesn't make them bad you just have to approach the uh, read properly if you have good execution good timing run stop short is great beta whiff down forward two uh, no problem four 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 <clears throat> So yeah, I mean, there's probably more to say about our running too. Um, on block, it's plus five, right? On block, it's plus five, which sets you up so jabs cannot be sidestepped by anybody. See? It hits them during the startup of their sidestep. I don't even think Lily could sidestep jabs. Uh, but they can still sidestep other moves, and then that gets kind of matchup dependent. Like characters that are kind of bulky, like a Jin, uh, Shaheen is probably a better example. Maybe uh, Paul, they'll have some trouble sidestepping certain things that other characters will not. You just have to like test all that shit. <laughs> if you're if you're testing anti Dragonov, you have to test him, record him doing while running too into all of these moves, and then see what you could sidestep. Well, not that obviously. See what you could sidestep. Down forward one. See, he was able to sidestep that. Uh, back four. He's still able to sidestep his own shit. Dragon off sidestep is a little bit better than most. You know, test all this shit. Down forward one. He's able to sidestep down forward one. I bet you Shaheen won't be able to. I know Gigas won't be able to. Jack. Eddie. Eddie uh, might be able to back two, might not. I don't know. Back two is the auto sidestep right move. Or back one plus two. That got changed. It used to be back two. Now it's back one plus two. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I think I covered most things about our this. There's probably more to say that I don't remember at the moment. Oh, boy. Uh, even though it's 15 frames, I-15, impact 15, it's not a 15-frame punisher. Uh, it is a punch, so it can be parried. It can be countered, excuse me, reversal. I 
Actually, this might be unique. This might be unique. I'm trying to sabak you with the factory plus four. That's too early. Yeah, I think I've heard people say they can't counter this. You know what? Let me be really sure. Yeah, this is one of those moves that has like a unique situation. It's weird because it's clearly a haymaker a punch. It's not like a like an elbow coming down or something like that, right? Wow, you're not random, I got it. Jen can parry it, just in case you don't believe me. <laughs> and uh, Geese can counter it. Geese's counter uh, attack reversal does not follow the standard rules that Asuka's and Dragonov's and King's, although King's cases. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, Thanks, for the help. Thanks for the donation, Rich Homie Kwan. I appreciate it greatly. Especially now, because it's uh let's just say it's a rough time. <laughs> I appreciate it. Coming off of the uh, end of the semester when I graduate, um I have to start paying off my loans. And I get less work during the summer, which is right around the corner, so. So, so you see, Geese does not follow the usual rules. And just to show you guys, Jin, same thing applies. Uh, Mech Animal, what's up? Asuka has a similar haymaker and it comes in handy. Yeah, Asuka's is like plus on like plus nine or some shit. I went through Asuka's move list. If you scroll down, you see my YouTube. I went through her move list already. I went through most of the cast move list. What the hell is Jim? Which I don't know if it is. Funny you mentioned that. I said that when I started streaming today. There's only two. The waiting room stage, I would like that because the waiting room is very minimalist, right? The waiting room is like, it probably would run less shitty. Unless those stupid little hit effects that stick around, like, mess with things, I don't know. Um, so anyway, as you can see here. Here's a little tidbit about Jin. The way he punishes off of his parry is completely dependent on the recovery of the move that he parries. So plus on block is fine, but since Dragon Ball has that big ass animation, right? He recovers very slow, and he, Jin could uh, Jin could still get a launch. Oh, not that. In case you're wondering how Jin's parry works. Same thing with uh, Gigas' armor move. His armor... The... Uh, 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 <laughs> that shit. Same thing applies. Except Gigas recovers a little slower from that than Jin does from his parry, I think. Oh, 
Like Wang has a parry, but Wang's parry isn't free flowing like Jin's is. Jin parries and he gets to pick whatever he wants to do. Wang was forced to commit to certain moves with his parry. Wang Jin Ray. Anyway, thanks again for the five bucks. Rich homie Baji Kwan. Rich homie Baji Kwan. All right, so that's why I'm running two in a nutshell. I actually did not know that it could not be countered. <clears throat> Next we got Spetsnaz Assault Russian Assault is not running too Spetsnaz Assault is just a running hit throw And the thing about this one is Okay, you can input it instantly The same way you can do it while running too Uh, yeah I don't know, this move is just kind of there I don't know if it's like really useful to be honest with you guys I never really explored this move uh, 20 frame startup, negative 7 on block with some pushback. That kind of, that being negative 7 kind of makes me say, eh, nah, maybe not. Maybe not. Uh, anything free on, oh, 50 damage, though. It does hurt. It hurts quite a bit. Uh, they're super far away. And if they hold back, that just whiffs. So it's like, fucking whatever. I suppose this just does really good damage. Mm. I wonder how it picked up in that situation. Yeah, that's there. Not much to say about that moment, to be honest with you. It's there, a safe uh, hit throw for a lot of damage, but it is negative seven and it doesn't push back very much. This is a weird move. This was actually really good in tag, uh, too. Because it was easy to just tag out and do this out of tag. So this is basically a slide. So this, uh, I don't know, if, does Dragon Off have the universal... No, he does not have the universal running four slide, right? He gets that knee. So this is basically his unique version. And this you cannot do instantly. There is no instant while full running three. That's why it's worded differently. That's why three arrows are while running and this is just run more than three steps. You have to be in full on like unstoppable tackle run mode kinda. Or tackle run mode, well maybe tackle, not tackle, but the unstoppable tackle. The, the unstoppable shoulder, whatever, the armor shoulder. And it's a normal, uh, normal hit hit throw. You don't need you don't need a counter hit like with Slay Ride. <sighs> wow, I actually went through another Oh boy, he's on the other side. So, to punish this, you have to punish it like a slide. Ooh, maybe not. Am I remembering this wrong? I'm remembering this wrong, aren't I? Or is it because I'm too close? Okay, you don't punish this like a slide. I'm sorry. Maybe I'm remembering this. I'm mistaking this for something else. You just block punishes like usual. Oh, it's negative 14. It's just like Corsica forward three. <laughs> negative 14, huh? All right. It's not as bad as I thought. But, like, I can't think of any too many practical situations. Like I said, in tag two, you could just raw tag. And when you raw tag, your character coming in was in a running state. So it was super easy to just raw tag and then just forward forward three when you raw tagged. And he would just get that slide and, like, hit throw them. Uh, Rio Dota, what's going on? Is the Corsica Forward 3 the same? No. Corsica Forward 3 needs a counter hit. 
You need a counter to get that. It's the same hit throw with pretty much the same damage, but on normal hit, this is negative five. <clears throat> that's that's the key difference. The thing is, like I said, you have to be in a full running state to get that uh, hit throw. Give me a moment here. You know, let me just start over my KOF playlist. <coughs> But it is the same on block. They're both negative 14. So that I didn't know until now, to be honest with you guys. I could have sworn this was worse on block. I might be mistaking it with another move. Uh, probably like Shaheen Slide or something. But they are both. See? Negative 14 on block says the Tekken bot. In both cases. And I was unable to wa uh, <coughs> while standing uh, two launches. So we know it's not 15. Uh, doesn't throw a normal hit. Yeah, it's like I just said. Never seen it used by any big players. Exactly, Donnelly. It was used in Tag 2. Trust me on that one. I know a lot of people would rather keep Tag 2 out of their memories, myself included. But it was much more useful there because of the raw tag system. <clears throat> so now we got the wild standing moves. Labeled while rising because they're stupid. Ah, the second hit of this is a homing move? Oh no, that's Corkscrew. Sorry. First on the list, while standing one is 12 frames, plus four on on hit, minus three on block. I didn't know it was only minus three. It's not bad. It has garbage range, as you can see. Very shitty range. But if you ride up in their face, not bad. Uh, and then we got two follow-ups to this. While standing one, two, you cannot delay it. You could input the two a little late. Not after the one swings, but you could input the two a little late. It doesn't really mean much. Um, maybe late enough to confirm a whiff. If you see a whiff, maybe you could confirm it off of that. Like a jab or something. But uh, this is a safe negative seven mid-high that causes a spin on normal hit. And the second hit on counter hit causes instant corkscrew. It also is a corkscrew move in and of itself. Like, uh, how can I do this? Uh, yeah, so if you hit somebody out of the air, you'll also get that. And as far as the conversion off of that second hit by itself, the same as the forward one plus two conversion. Did I ever go through forward one plus two? Or am I forgetting something? Oh yeah, I did, I did, I'm sorry. Um, the conversion is the same. Back to while standing one, jab, yada, 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 right? Uh, Uptime, 2 hours and 58 minutes, which is why I'm feeling kind of tuckered out. <laughs> I might save the throws for a part 3. Uh, especially since I have to get back to my schoolwork and it's 8 p.m. So anyway. This is one of his 12 frame punishers while standing. He has 3. He has another follow-up, which would be his second 12 frame punisher. While standing, 1-3. Two more damage, knocks back. They both wall splat, obviously. And in this case, he is unsafe. Negative 12, right in their face. And you cannot delay it. Same thing about, uh, similar to the uh, while standing 1-2. I don't think the second it has any uh, unique properties. And, uh, it just knocks bad. Yeah, same thing. It does cause that little extra roll. When you see, you see how it, uh, it knocks him back and then he rolls like that. That might mean you might get something like a dash up stomp if they happen to roll into the wall. But in general, this is just like a good like block punish and it's a good wall splat tool. Because you'll be ducking in people's faces near the wall in general with drag. Or maybe not really in people's faces, but like from this range, you'll be ducking a lot. And they come in and whiff something, you got that. I don't think you could sidestep uh, the mid. Let's see. If I block the first hit, nah, I can't even start to sidestep. That's just a tracking on this thing, though. Okay. Yeah, so. You still have to, okay, yeah. You gotta be careful with the second hit if you make the first one whiff. If you just step. But if you walk, you make them both whiff easily. Now the second, the high, I'm pretty sure tracks. Let's see. I've been wrong before, but it looks like it should track, right? So. Yeah, see? 
Ah, look at that, see? Okay, not in that direction. But if you go towards the way he's swinging it, it's gonna catch you right in the mouth. That's pretty much it with that. It's just one of those things you get in their face. You can do it instant while standing one, two, or instant while standing two, three. Instant while standing is really good for him, man. It's not just instant while standing four for double conversions. You get an instant while standing 12 frame move that goes into some really good follow-ups. So that was Quillian, Killian, Killian. Double hilt. Now we got Ballistic Upper, his while standing two that got buffed. Once upon a time, this shit used to whiff on a, a lot of low profile moves. Like moves that low profile on block, for example, Eddie's, the Capo's uh, sweep. The, uh, what was it? Three to the four. Whatever the fuck the low sweep, the low jungle starter is. When you block that, they would be like, the upper body would be against the floor. You would block this, and you would have to delay it like the perfect amount of frames to get this to connect. They buffed that in this game. So the hitbox. And this is the, la the last patch that they did after the game came out. They buffed the hitbox on this. But I found out the hard way that it doesn't stop everything. For example, there's still situations where, <sighs> unfortunate situations where characters were low profile, low profile under it. Man, you guys can tell I'm out of it, man. I'm like tongue twisted left and right. I can't even talk, damn it. See, I found this particular this is out the hard way online. It's really fucked up. I don't know why this move recovers this way. Right now, but... Check this out. So Nina has this annoying ass uh, while standing 12, 13 frame move, I forget. Right? It's while standing 1, 1 plus 2, which is a natural uh, combo, right? Uh, 13 frames. So it's a 13 frame punish, whatever. But in general, Nina players use it in a neutral. I want you to pay attention to her animation. You see after she whiffs, uh, after she swings the double high, how she recovers ducking. Like she's trying to kiss her whole kneecap. Let's see if I can recreate this. Oh my god. Oh my god. That happened to me during a match. Oh my god. Dragon off. So yeah, that whiffing is the thing that used to happen when he blocked uh, certain sweeps and shit. You gotta be mindful of that, I guess, sometimes. I don't know. Shit's fucked up. But that is a 15 frame Punisher. And I think he could convert when people get hit out of the air. I never tested this, but I feel like he can. Let me see. jump right wait rewind I was wrong about back one plus two it does not force crouch you recover standing oops sorry about that <laughs> this definitely forces crouch Yeah, see? It, it floats them really high. Uh, try to do it later. See? Uh, that was a full launch. 
Maybe not that, but... No. Okay. Hit him low. Yeah, back one, two. Just like the flow off of the knee. Back one, two. Consistent. But uh, in general, it's just a 15 frame while standing launcher. Not much else to say about it, but let's test the tracking. I think it's negative 12 on block. What is it? Uh, yeah, negative 12 on block. Let's test the tracking. Negative three situation is pretty good to test tracking. As long as it's not pushing back. Look at this. <laughs> pretty good against step. Pretty good. Maybe not against like a Lily or something, but most of the cast. Oh, maybe including Lily. I don't know. And the range is kind of decent. Well, I take that back. <laughs> Alright. Range isn't that great. But luckily, he does not really have a uh, full crotch mix-up. So it doesn't matter that much. He does have like the generic lows, but it's whatever. Uh, if you wonder why you'll sometimes see Aris duck, and then he'll do this for a bit, and then do the wall standing too. It's because he's doing this to like get people to swing at him. And he moves forward a little bit. It's like, swing at me, and then he'll interrupt them with that. That's really what's going on there. That's just like a mental mind game. That's not like a mix-up tool. Um, next, we got Glacial Hilt. This is a good move. I think this is linear, but good damage, wall splat. It's basically the second hit of this. It's similar to that, but it's safe on block. Negative nine with a little bit of pushback. Really good at the wall. Really dang good at the wall. Right, because it has a lot of range. And typically with some of his wall setups, you'll either be up close in their face and sidestepping to set up like a back four three, or you'll push yourself away with something like this, and then you'll do like you'll duck and go right into that in case you don't want to do something super unsafe like that. Or risk them ducking this or block punishing this. You guys do this and you're still good. You may not be able to move, but you'll be safe at least. So this is just kinda of like a good move in general. At the wall. In a neutral situation, it's not bad either. It's just, it's just a nice long range while standing move. It's really all it is. Uh, let's test the tracking. Boom, right? Mm, let's check that out. So it catches my step right to his left. We also have a zero neutral situation. Oh yeah, force crouch. Oh man. Oh, okay, so it's probably slow enough that it's messing up my sidestep timing. In a negative three situation, it's probably coming out late enough that I would have to adjust my timing on a side step to get a, uh, around it, if I, if I were to go right. So it's not really like a right tracking move. See, there it is, see? Side step a tiny bit later. The negative three is putting him in that situation. So it's not really a tracking move, it's just, if you were to go towards the, that's not even toward, that's away from the kick. If you were to go right, you would have to time it better. You're not really gonna be sidestepping, thinking about this specific move, really, so. And if you are, go left. <sighs> Next. Frost Tackle. This is a, another 12 frame while standing Punisher. Uh, not as damaging as the while standing uh, one into the follows, but more range. And um, it, does it does push back a lot on blocks, so it's difficult to punish sometimes. And it pushes back on hit a lot, including for wall splat. The fucked up thing is, alright, this got nerfed. This used to be negative 14 on block, now it's negative 15. But the fucked up thing is this pushback gives a lot of uh, uh, people fits when they try to launch punish it. See, what's going on there, he was able to block this one time. Not because I was slow, but because he blocked the second active frame. Like, if I'm not right in his face, he'll either block the second active frame or it'll whiff. See? 
You see how it says active two out of two next to down forward two? That's frame number 16 that's hitting him, and that's why it's negative 11 instead of negative 12. <clears throat> right? And not even forward 4-4, four, four, which used to be the punish for this move for Dragon because it's 14 frames or reaches, right? So you got to, like, settle with that or um, what was the other punish? Uh, there's another punish that he has a lot of range on, and I can't remember at the moment. I found this out last time, too. 4-1 is not reliable either. I forgot what the other punish is. Well, that's a 15 frame punish. Not that. Huh. I forgot what the other punish I found. What I thought I was. Oh, yeah. Forward 4-4 four, four is probably what I was thinking about, but it also whiffs. Which sucks. So if you want any consistency, back three seems to be what you have to settle with. with because of the range. <sighs> oh, he has sidestep, uh, a sidestep string. I forgot about this. And uh, the new roll. We got sidestep two, which has all these follow-ups. This is not a, a move that you see very often, and I don't think it's bad. I don't know why. Let's see. So sidestep two, three is a natural comma, plus five on the hit, mid-high. Delayable, by the way. Negative nine on block. Hit confirm. No, uh... Difficult hit confirm, maybe. And if not, since it's a sidestep move, you could use it the way I talked about turning this into hit confirm. You could totally use it the way I said before. You can do this with sidestep moves in general, by the way, especially the strings. Wow, no, it's too slow. The first hit is 20 frames, it's too slow. If he did anything slower than the jab, that recovers slower, it'll probably work there. slower than a jab then he could hit confirm it also for sure but eh not worth it too slow you need like a 15 frame or faster move really I would say um, and he has one plus two which is high mid not a natural combo quick question here for you uh, Merg is the streamlabs streamlabs use period or comma or is it five dollars equals five or five comma equals five? Oh, period, period, five period zero zero equals five dollars. Decimal system. Because we go by cents, right? So point oh one is one cent, point one zero is ten cents, and uh, one point is one whole dollar. <clears throat> Alright, so uh, I'm losing steam here, guys. Sorry. <laughs> Another thing about sidestep 2-3 uh, that I forgot to mention, and this is why it's good I could delay it, if I could just make the first hit whiff. Alright, 
Alright, this is easier. <sighs> it's, uh... Oh my god, are you kidding me? Delay it. What the fuck, dude? There it is. It is a counter hit hit throw. Similar to the down forward three. <laughs> Five dollars and two cents, huh? <laughs> good, good looking out, Oswizanki. Oh, Thank you very much for the five dollars and two cents. So yeah, as you can see, five point zero two is five dollars and two cents. <coughs> I appreciate it. All right, so um, yeah, sorry for losing steam, guys. I, I'm, let me get through this couple of moves here. I need a Red Bull sponsorship to keep that energy up. <laughs> um, I well, it's also because it's getting late and I have to finish some homework assignments before the night. So I can't be too tucked around. So as you can see, yeah, it's a hit throw on a second hit and it is safe on block, right? So we got that out of the way. Right, and then it's a natural combo normal hit plus five. So next I was looking at, it's a one plus two, which goes into that tackle. Side step two, one plus two is how you do this part. And then you can do one plus two again to go into a tackle after that, right? Or you can do side step two, one plus two. Uh, it's a four, is it? Yeah, it's a four. Which is negative ten. Which is a uh, normal hit juggle starter. You guys don't see this move at all, right? Maybe he's not a juggle starter, actually. Maybe he's not. Yeah. Oh, shit. If it were a juggle starter, you probably would see this move more often. Same thing on counter hit. All right, negative 10. If you counter hit with the side step two, then that combos. Does the whole thing combo though? No, we don't. All right. How about if you counter hit with the second hit? How about you counter hit with the mid in the end? There it is. So if you get the mid to counter hit in the end, then it combos into the last hit. And you do whatever the hell the follow-up is. I never see this move, so I have no idea what the follow-up would be. It does that kind of weird knockout where you can't really float him. You might just get a stomp or a forward, forward, four. Floor break with a down three, four. March of Tyranny, maybe. So maybe just a stomp, which I think floor breaks anyway. Yeah, it's a stomp. That's what I would do. Which is still a ton of damage if you tie it onto the mid counter hitting. Let's look at that first. So that's only negative four. And if I try to duck, it's a wall standing for some reason. You could definitely land a counter hit. I uh, can't sidestep that. Nope, no sidestep on that. Can I sidestep the first part? If I, if I time it right? Ooh, you saw how that, that, that hit track? 
Oh, you get them back, though. Another thing about this, though. I think that combos. I think. No, okay. It doesn't. The tackle will probably be a free attempt there, They probably, but they'll probably be able to break it still. <sighs> so, yeah, I mean, you know, the ward is kind of, it's there. It's not too bad. It is a high, though, and he has no mix-up to go with that high. You could delay it a lot, though. Which opens up this, which is only negative four on block, so it's not a bad string. I don't think this is a bad string. You just don't see it because he's dragging off. He doesn't fucking need it. <laughs> right? This is another one of those things that he just kind of has that another character would probably be able to use it well. If it were size to two, if size to two were like faster, like 15 frames, then this would be, I would use this a lot. 20 frames is a little too slow for me. Spikes now. Does back one two work? Uh, nah. Even if it did, the first hit would make him bounce on the floor weird, just like down four, and it wouldn't. It wouldn't combo. He might have some sort of special conversion. I don't know. Recovers pretty slow too. That's why I'm getting a good grab. Why is he getting that? Jesus. Okay, good. At least I got it to come out, so it whiffs. Uh, yeah, nah. I mean, the stomp isn't bad, in my opinion, because I think a floor breaks. Uh, yeah, I don't think... This isn't amazing, but I don't think it's bad. It's just another thing. When, when you have a character with so many good moves, you could do the obviously good stuff, but then every once in a while, you could totally bust out a sidestep, too. Just to be like, what the fuck? What even is this move? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And then the fact that it's only negative four on block, going into this, you could do some uh, cool shit if you bust it out every, you know, once in a blue moon and catch people off guard. So, yeah. Negative 10, does it push back? It pushes back. It's negative 10 with pushback. Gigas could punish it, but probably. Maybe not. I don't know. It doesn't jail. I uh, can't sidestep it. Oh, I can. Okay, there it goes. That's how you turn this into a gimmick. Because I didn't delay that. But if you stop at the second one, you're only negative four, so if they were to sidestep, you could totally just do like a down two after it and then mix it up with like other stuff that tracks to your left side, right? So you're not without loss, whether it's a back four or back three or a sidestep with them or dash up and do something else. You can do a lot. It doesn't make this useless. That just sets it up so if they were to swing, you know... They'll get hit. Even if it's a counter hit, you've got the same thing. It's still 33 damage plus a stomp if they get counter hit. So, you can make this move work. Sidestep 2, uh, 3, you mean. It it throws on a normal hit, wasn't it? No, counter hit. I tested that already. Earlier. I know that. Same as down forward 3, basically. Similar. Uh, 
and it's negative nine. And it's a natural combo, and you could delay it to set up that second hit to counter hit. Did they already go through his jumping launcher kick thing? Yes, you talking about this? <laughs> I think the four is trash. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's not useless, uh, Doomshine, but like I said, you could play around to set it up. A really high damage crumple one? His jump kick launcher? Wait. What? Crumple? Kick? A kick that crumples? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, that? This one? Yeah, I, I did this uh, last time with part one, but I'll go over with you again. Uh, this is a very difficult to punish. Actually, no, sorry, it's safe. This is safe on block if you check right when you land. And the way you juggle off of this is... What is it for you? you have to go towards your left. So if you're on one piece side, you have to tech. Right when you land, tech with punches. If you're on a two piece side... You gotta tech with kicks. And then you do while standing four, and so whatever. That's how you convert. And the purpose of this is it's a high, safe on block, low crush. But it, if you crush something like a down two where he recovers crouching, it's no good. But if you do it against, let's say, down four, then it's great. But if you use it against this, Obviously, it's no good. The only saving grace being... Let me make him tech. It's safe. You could get interrupted, though. And floated. And uh, much like the jumping up, the up forward three, you can't. Yeah, it, after it whiffs, if you were to crouch it, you can't really flow him with anything. So it's pretty damn safe. Yeah, your only bet is to block it and then mix him up. Or interrupt it. If, you, if it's obvious when they're doing it, interrupt it with a jab. And then do your, uh, whatever your flow juggle is. But remember, when they tech, they're invincible, right? See? They're invincible, so whatever, when they tech. Uh, that was too slow. But once they get off the floor... Oh, this is actually like negative nine, it's saying, whatever. Once they get off the floor, they're vulnerable. So what that means is even if they were to tech into like, let's say a sidestep or an arm move, like, let me show you. I saw I can't tech. See, they cannot sidestep no matter how linear the move is. If you time it so it hits them right when they tech, it's not going to work. God damn it, I can't get the tech all of a sudden. Okay, he recovers crouching, so I'm trying to do the armor move. Same thing here. See? The only thing that will be able to beat uh, beat you, uh, beat out you swinging against the opponent on tech with the well-timed attack is like an EXDP from Akuma or Eliza or a Geese uh, Raising Storm. That's the only thing that's going to beat this out. If they miss the tech, you could stomp it, yeah. If they don't tech, you could stomp them. Nah, it's, uh, it's a good move. This used to be even better in Tag 2 because his damage off of it was fucking bananas.
His damage that off of it and this isn't as crazy. Same thing applies to Rage Drive, by the way. Even if you were to input, uh, put Rage Drive on a button and they were to get up and tech and do Rage Drive from crouching like the fucking cheaters that they are, you'll still interrupt it because uh, Armor and Rage... Uh, sorry, Rage Art, not Drive. Rage Art have eight frames to start up. Outside of, like, one other armor move for Kazumi. All right, so, guys, I appreciate the donations. I appreciate the viewers. I'm going to call it here. Next time I'll do these last few moves, I'll go over his throws. He has a lot. And I'll go over his wall game. He has a lot going on with these, with these throws, trust me. And I'll go over his wall game, which is fucking sick. One of the best wall games in the game. And that'll be next time. Thanks for tuning in. I got to get back to my schoolwork. And y'all have a good night or good day or whatever it is, wherever you're from. Take it easy.